The base is loaded. Philly's down two. And Franson lines one toward right center field. That's going to split the gap and go to the wall. One run scores. Here comes Carrera. He'll score. They're waving Michael Young home. The throw to the plate. The Phillies have won it. Kevin Franson comes off the bench and shoots a three-run double into the gap in right center field. And the Phillies come from behind, and they win it four to three. Nothing better than a day game after a walk-off victory the night before. The fans all talking about Kevin Franzen, even if they're as young as these guys that are getting a chance to see the final game of this three-game series between the Phillies and the Kansas City Royals. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Chris Wheeler. What a day it was yesterday at the ballpark. The Phillies' offense was scuffling. I guess that's an understatement. Until the ninth inning when Kevin Franzen came through in a big way, he was still all smiles this morning in the clubhouse. And what a difference, too. One in four or two in three with one out involved in it. And that's one of the great things about this game, Tom. Sometimes you can't get that third out, and sometimes it comes in your favor. And last night it was in the Phillies' favor. Here's the way it started out, a really good at bat by Chase Utley. Ned Yost thinks, where was that thing? But that was ball four. Now, Ryan Howard, he has a good at bat. And he walks two on and nobody out. And the bases were loaded. Then Dominic Brown strikes out on a breaking ball in the dirt. This slider right there is a strike three call. That was close. And here comes Kevin Franson off the bench, hunting for a first ball, fastball. He got it and ripped that thing. Watch this ball when it comes off the wall, too. It stays close to the wall. And that really helped the decision to uh, wave uh, Michael Young home with a winning run, even though I think Ryan Sandberg is going to gamble anyway at home in that situation. What a huge win for the Phillies. You talk about reversal of fortune. What happened in the ninth inning compared to the previous 14 innings over two games. They got it done big time. And that thing, we'll see if it gives them a good lift here today. Well, and that's what the Phillies are looking for. They're looking for a big lift because obviously... It's a great pitching matchup where the two aces are going after each other. Cole Hamels for the Phillies and James Shields for the Royals. Yeah, two really, really good pitchers. That that point right now, we have gone through your rotation. You're back to your number ones, and these are two really good number one starters. Cole Hamels has pitched so well in this ballpark throughout his career. He's undefeated in his last seven starts here, going back to last year, of course, and overall. Just tremendous numbers. When you think about an ERA here, just 3.20. And then you have big game James Shields, as they called him when he was with the Rays. And he has pitched a lot of big games for the Rays. Now over here with Kansas City, this guy can be a little bit volatile out on the mound. Big time stuff, though. A strikeout pitcher, a tremendous competitor. And when a flashback to the World Series, well, the Rays won one game in that World Series. And this was it. The game in Tampa. And look at the stuff on him. The game was in St. Petersburg, and he has a real good changeup, breaking ball, fastball, taking hitters to one knee. This should be a lot of fun. We saw him here last year in the Phillies, including Juan Pierre, of all people, hit a home run off him, but it was a heck of a game. That was the one that Tommy won in the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, it should be interesting today because both these pitchers are coming off uh, losses in their first game uh, of the season with each other, and it's going to be interesting to see how they go after things because both threw a lot of fastballs in their first starts of the year. So it is the final game of this three-game series. Cole Hamels makes his return to Citizens Bank Park. He'll get the baseball for the Phillies. The lineups and first pitch from Philadelphia when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. By Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one of your Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of your Phillies. By Citizens Bank, where good banking is good citizenship. Is it a time you experience good banking? And by Independence Blue Cross. We're creating a more coordinated health care system that is built around you. Independence Blue Cross, changing the game. Would you please remain standing? 
We ask that veterans please salute as the Barnegat High School Select Choir, under the direction of Natalie Altunji, sing our national anthem. The kids who are randomly selected get a chance to say hello to their heroes. And how about that little guy getting a chance to get an autograph from Jimmy Rollins on a beautiful afternoon for baseball here in Philadelphia as the Phillies and the Royals wrap up this series. And the Fanatics been all over the Royals dug out their TV crew all weekend long and it continued today. In fact, he and Jeff Rancor have had this back and forth the entire weekend. There's Escobar thought about the glove being thrown out. And of course, the Fanatic is uh, looking for some help and Drawn a line, and here comes Jeff Francoeur. He'll go toward the line. He's using a little weapon. The fanatic just wasn't ready for it, Wills. <laughs> but it's been funny watching those two go back and forth during the course of the weekend. The fanatic is in rare form this afternoon. James Shields, whether he feels that way or not, his catcher certainly got a kick out of it. Let's take a look at the Royals starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home. For the most live sports, it's Gordon Escobar and Butler, followed by Perez, Francor, and Moustakis. At the bottom third, of Lorenzo Kane, Chris Getz, and James Shields, who was making the start this afternoon for the Royals against left hander Cole Hamels. The 29 year old lost his first outing of the year and five strikeouts at five innings, but he was he was strong with his fastball, and that probably didn't help him at all. Yeah, and he couldn't locate it either. He threw a lot of fastballs. In the zone, that not unusual for Cole Hamels to have a poor outing his first time out. It's happened before in his major league career, and uh, he's bounced back quite nicely and will again this year. There's a repertoire on him right there, and you see his numbers in this ballpark last year, just tremendous. Fly ball center field, Ben Revere is out there. So just a couple of pitches, and there's one away here in the top of the first. There was a moment of silence prior to uh, the start of today's ball game uh, for Captain Michael Goodwin, who Passed away yesterday in a fire here in Philadelphia. The Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia flag is at half mass uh, out in center field. And just a, a terrible story. Uh, we could see the smoke from the fire from the ballpark yesterday. And our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, Captain Goodwin's wife and his two grown children and all of the firefighters 
uh, from the city of Philadelphia. It is the third fatality uh, this year over the last year in Philadelphia. Eric Kratz got on that ball quickly but it's a foul ball. And it's one almost, ball and one almost strike. a year to the day that the two firemen were were killed last year in a fire. Um, just shows me police and firemen every day they every day they go to work. The danger they face and how much we all owe to them. Well, Dan Baker announced the moment of silence, and you could hear a pin drop here at the ballpark. The Royals were out in front of their dugout. You can see them bow their heads as uh, the moment of silence took place. One and two the count to Escobar. Escobar two for nine with a couple runs scored in the series so far. Hitting 238 overall. He was late on that pitch. And it remains one and two. To him, a change up the pitch before that. That was a fastball, maybe a cut fastball. Looked like it moved in a little bit. And uh, that's what Cole Hamels can do so effectively now to right handed hitters that he wasn't able to do before that pitch and then go away from them. He's going to come back inside with a fastball. And he fights it off. Hamels at his last outing, we said that he. Couldn't locate the fastball the way he would like. He said he had such an adrenaline rush starting the opener of the season. It was odd to see his breakdowns because normally he'll throw, you know, majority of pitches will be fastballs, but then it will be the changeup after that. But the majority of his pitches were fastballs and cutters and less changeups than usual. Well, you can kind of see he was amped up last week. His velocity was up, but velocity doesn't mean a whole lot if you're getting it. Towards the middle of the plate, the major league hitters. Now you see what he did in that game, and he expects him to be a lot better here this afternoon. He's going up against another guy who's really good in James Shields. Outside and low, three and two the count. Got him. Threw him a change up. Got him swinging for the first strike out of the day. Not time now for our Nissan keys to this afternoon's game. Just a beautiful Sunday afternoon for Charlie Manuel and his Phillies. Big game James. That's what they call Shields against Cole Hamels. And any momentum from last night? We'll see. Now the Phillies are hoping that they'll ride the momentum of Kevin Franzen's walk off double in last night's ball game. Here's Billy Butler who gets the start at first base again with the left hander on the mound. We said we weren't sure whether he would start today. But Ned Yost has decided to put him out there against the lefty and Hosper will come off the bench for a second straight day. Yeah, a lot of routine plays. Uh, he didn't have any problems in the field. Cole's not missing by a whole lot with his pitches here early in the game but. As, as pitchers want to do in the major league, he's just trying to establish his fastball. Now he's going to throw changeup. Back toward the middle. Cole Hamels, like a vacuum, makes the play. It's a one, two, three, top of the first inning. A fly out, a strikeout, and a ground out. We've played a half. We go to the bottom of the first. It's the Royals, nothing. And the Phillies coming up.
Three game series. Let's take a look at Charlie Manuel's lineup for today. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off is Revere, followed by Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley. Ryan Howard is the cleanup batter. Michael Young is over at third base, hitting fifth. Dominic Brown bats sixth. Eric Kratz moves up to the seven hole. He'll do the catching today. That's because Ezekiel Carrera will make his first start in a Phillies uniform in right field. And Cole Hamels, of course, will bat ninth. And they'll be uh, facing right hander James Shields, the 31 year old from New Hall, California. A lot of success with the Tampa Bay Rays. And as is sometimes the case with the Rays, they felt like they couldn't pay him anymore. So they traded him off to the Kansas City Royals. Yeah, well, they got a pretty good prospect in return. Yeah, they sure didn't trade him because they wanted to necessarily, because his second half of the season last year was unbelievable. He is very similar, as you see on our Budweiser scouting report, as Cole Hamels in that fastball changeup mix. Now, he'll mix in other pitches, too, but he's going to go after you with those two pitches, and he's been very, very consistent. He's a guy who has a, well, he's got a, a motor running all the time, and you can get him a little bit fried out there once in a while, and teams can get to him. Ben Revere takes a strike to start his at bat. It's 0 1. He is very intense. Revere 2 for 7 lifetime against James Shields. Third baseman Moustakis way in on the grass. Back toward the middle. Escobar gets to it, but he has no play. And Revere is aboard. We mentioned he had 39 infield hits a season ago. And with that speed, he's able to pick one up. Right out of the shoot here in the bottom of the first. Well, that's what you really like to see from him. Hit the ball on the ground, and then hopefully it's in a spot it'll go through. Or it'll be where an infielder can't make a play on him. That's a hundred hopper right up the middle. That's going to be a base hit for Ben Revere every time. You can run on Shields. Last year, 16 attempts, 14 successful. Well, Revere has stolen two bases so far this year. Had 40 stolen bases a season ago, was caught nine times. And a breaking ball in there for a strike to Rollins. Jimmy Rollins would try and take some pitches maybe early for a base dealer, but he also has that hole in the right side to take a shot at. Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Mike O'Farrell of Philadelphia. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game. And Mike's going to win $200. Back toward the middle, off the glove of Escobar. Revere's going to go on the third. What a break for the Phillies because Rollins hit it. Well, he hit it like a bullet. First and third with nobody out. See the replay on that because I don't know if Escobar had a lunge for that the way that he did. That was going to be a sweet little one hop double play ball, it looked like. And Phillies get the big break, as Tom said, as it's deflected into right field. See how it's hit here. Well, maybe he had to. Angle we saw it originally. No, he really does not have to go down to his knees and lunge that That's way. That's a good point. Ball. He's, he got himself out of control where if the ball takes any change of direction, he really can't do a whole lot with it. He's kind of defenseless, and that's what happened on that play. Well, now the Royals are giving the Phils a run. They'll set up for two with nobody out here in the bottom of the first, and Utley at the plate. Chase, seven for 18 so far. He's hitting 389 with six runs batted in. Well, you want to get after a guy like Shields right now because these veteran pitchers and the good ones, the way he is, sometimes if you don't get him in the first inning, you have a problem. Count Utley started that rally last night, which led to the Phillies' victory. His walk, which was pivotal because it brought the tying run of the plate, and essentially the next two guys walked, and that loaded up the bases for the Phillies. How about the 3 2 pitch he took out close? It was. There was a lot of talk about that. There was also the talk about the two strike pitch to Mayberry that looked like it was a little wide that was called a strike. Yeah, it probably was. One and one the count to Utley. It all set up the heroics of Kevin Franzen. We got a chance to provide that spark, which was great to see. As we said, he's one of the best guys in the game. But also with his mom and dad in the audience watching. 
That must have been a great feeling. Watch the whole game. Wonder if your son's going to get in, and then bam, he wins the ball game. He never had a walk-off hit in the major leagues. Now he does. Rollins goes, pitches loop toward left center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Revere will score. Rollins continues to third. One nothing Phillies on out the seventh ribby of the year. How about if you're Shields right now? You get a little excited. First hit, a hundred hopper up the middle. Second one's a double play ball. They don't make the play. And now a parachute out the left field. So Phillies making contact here, running the bases well early in the game, and have a chance for an inning here against a good pitcher. See right there with Jimmy running and and. Chase fights it off. Good base running by Rollins got in the vicinity of second base on there where he felt he could still get back if it's caught. And then when it drops, he can go over to third base. And again, the Royals are giving the Phillies another run. With Ryan Howard up, runners on first and third. The infield back. Howard tried to check. They'll appeal. Yes, he went, says Jeff Kellogg. Kellogg's the crew chief. Still have the overshift as Tom mentioned, but Ryan Howard gets some more room here with a man on first. By that I mean they can't play the second baseman all the way out in the outfield. It takes so many hits away from him, even on line drives. See where they have to play. I like I do this. <laughs> Normally they're out in that area. You could use that half circle making it seem like it yeah, went over his head. That's a little bit uh, testy. Just work on the straight lines. He went that time. It's one and two. Shields is not going to necessarily challenge you here. He has such great off speed stuff. He can throw slider, he'll throw curveball cutter, and he has an outstanding changeup. So he doesn't really have to give in. Got him through the changeup. Threw him almost all off speed stuff in that at bat. And that's what the thing that he can do to you. He's not going to give in with fastballs all the time. Well, we were talking about Kevin Francis game winning hit. Let's take a look at our cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. His three run walk off double last night made him the first Phillies player to have a three RBI walk off hit that wasn't a home run since 1973 when Dell Unser did it. Now that's a fact. Michael Young, the hitter, Royals set up to turn two with one out. And Young takes a strike at the knees. It's 0 and 1. Alonso had a heck of a run as a pinch hitter for the Phillies in the times that he was here. He has a bunch of home runs for them. I can't say that I remember that double, though. It'll come to you at some point during the day. I'd like to know who the pitcher was. Over toward the hole, that'll sneak in the left field of base hit. Rollins will score, and the Phillies lead it two nothing. Boy, they're they're taking advantage of some stuff in this thing. There's another potential double play ball that finds a hole. See Ned Yost just shaking his head. You got to be good in this game. A little bit of luck really helps too. Good contact there by Michael Young. They're pinched up the middle for a double play ball, so that leaves that hole wide open on the left side like that. And he just bounces it through. Well, still a runner in scoring position for the Phillies with one out. Dominic Brown will be the hitter. Dominic so far five for 19. Hit a home run in the opener against the Royals. To stop now if you can get more of this guy. There's Ryan Howard. He's the only out so far in this inning. Had a change up low and inside, 2 0. 
It finished with a game with Shields, and normally you'll look at his breakdown on pitches, and he'll go fastball, change up, and then after that, he'll mix in those three off, other off speed pitches fastball, I mean, cr cutter, curveball, and um, and slider once, the, once in a while also. His last outing against the White Sox, Dave Island, their pitching coach, was trying to get him to establish more fastballs because he does have such good secondary pitches, but they wanted him to throw more fastballs, and he did. He was locked up uh, against a very good pitcher in Chris Sal from the White Sox. He gave up one run, and that beat him. Yeah, last uh, last start, 52% of his pitches were fastballs. Last year it was 31%, and he had 7% sliders. And last year, it would be 16% in his outing. 2-0 the count to Brown. And a line drive. Base hit it to right center field. Utley's going to score. Young on his way to third. It's 3-0 Phillies. An RBI single for Dominic Brown. That looked like an all-speed pitch, too. Maybe change up. Hit it hard. It looked like the second baseman, Guess, was going to make a diving catch for a double play. Right under his glove. They were playing in, but hoping yeah. to turn two. Sure, they're cheating in. That's the thing. When you get men on base, you know the the infielders have to be in more of a defensive position. Give ground. There it is, right there. Look how close he came to that. And now it goes didn't go under his glove. It was past it. Well, that ball was hit hard. Oh, by that was Dominic that was hit right on the nose. That would have had to be right at him to make a play on it. And this is this is one of those things you see so often in baseball, Tom. You win a game like last night, and everybody comes out a little more loosey goosey. That doesn't mean you're going to have all these hits that they've had or the way they've gotten them, but sometimes it just changes things around for a little while. Eric Kratz, Charlie Manuel said, was going to be the guy to hit last night if he needed a home run, but since he just needed a hit, that's why Franzen pinch hit. So Kratz back behind the plate today. And it's 0-1. Good first to thirding in this inning, giving yourself chances to get runs on fly balls with less than two outs. And once again, they have a runner at third with less than two outs. Throw up a crooked number off this guy in the first inning, and that's really a good sign. Pitchers duel in Washington. Strasburg at Cueto. You think, oh, that'll be low scoring. 3 3 in the second. Yeah, Strasburg gave up three runs at the bottom of the first. And then the Nationals in the top of the second were able to get three against Cueto. That's some matchup right there. That's like today. This is a good one. Well, you're, you're at that point now where you get the number ones matched up again. Oh, and two, the count to Kratz, first and third for the Phillies. Seems like he's thrown a lot of pitches, but he hasn't because they've hit some balls early in the count off. It's only 20 to this point. Rollins and Revere started the scoring. Get down to the seven hole hitter, you think, boy, there's probably been a lot of pitches to him. This will be the 21st of the inning for Shields. In the air to left center field. Going back on it is Alex Gordon. and he has room. And he makes the catch. Taggy from third and coming home is young. It'll be a sacrifice fly for Eric Kratz. And it's 4 nothing Phillies. Talk about it all the time. They're one of the most underrated parts of this sport, in my opinion, are first to third. If you can do that consistently, you will score runs and big runs as they add up during the game. And a, another example there of good base running where you're first to third, and then a guy gets a fly ball and you get a run out of it. Well, the Phillies who have struggled with runners in scoring position. Up until last night's double by Franzen. Now four for their last five, counting the three for four today. That's better than what was it, six for 30 going into last night's game. Yeah, it was grim. Here's Ezekiel Carrera in his first Phillies at bat. He scored the tying run last night. He was sent in to pinch run for Ryan Howard. If the game had gone to the bottom of the, or the top of the 10th uh, inning, then Franzen would have played first base. We thought maybe it would be Mayberry, but it was going to be Franzen. 1 0 pitch. Out toward right field. Frank Core will settle under it. 
And he puts it away for the final out. Eight men come to the plate in the inning for the Phillies. They pick up five base hits. It began with Revere, then Jimmy Rollins, and then Chase up. They put the Phillies off the board. Michael Young added an RBI single. Dominic Brown hit the hardest ball of the inning until Kratz's sack fly, 4 0 Phillies. Top of the second, Phillies up 4 0. And Salvatore Perez takes the first pitch outside and high, 1 0. So Hamill's now working with a four run lead. Phillies had a four run lead in the opener. They weren't able to hold it. Let's see if Hamill's is able to do it here. He looked sharper today and more under control, I think it's safe to say, with the first four hitters. Yeah, and, and all of a sudden you, you feel 10 feet tall, you go out there and your team throws a four spot up in the first inning off a pitcher like Shields. Two and one the count that pitch outside doesn't mean you go out of your game plan either you don't start throwing all fastballs or something like that. But you can you can do some things that, and take some chances that you wouldn't be able to take if you're in a scoreless game or one run game. Ooh. Well we wanted to know where that was there's shields one and one hit me that first inning. He still looks disgusted. Well yeah, that was a great inning for the Phillies but he knows he made some pitches in that inning and. He didn't get the results that he wanted. Three and two the count. That ball Jimmy Rollins hit just think about that that's two outs and nobody on base. Even though it's a hit. Ball four so a lead off walk for Perez. Well, this Tuesday, when the Phillies take on the New York Mets, it's the first of two Hatfield Dollar Dog Nights here at the yard. Second one is Monday, the 22nd, against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mark your calendars now. Order your tickets by going to phillies.com. You can also see a list of the rest of the Dollar Dog Nights here at the ballpark this year. Last thing you want to do is come out and walk the leadoff man after you just got a four spot. And nobody knows that more than Hamels. You can see how disgusted he was when he walked Perez. Well, Jeff Francoeur has the most at bats out of anybody, of course, in the Royals lineup against Hamels. He's 14 for 50 against him for his career. Fly ball, right center field. Carrera calls off Revere, but Revere makes the final say. Yeah, those guys have not played together, so there's always a communication thing involved. But if the center fielder can get to it, rule of thumb, he catches it. He has the right away. Carrera should know that because he can play all three outfield positions. Right. One out, Mike Moustakis, three for five in the opener. And it's 0 1. Got a piece of that one. Oh, 
off the end of the bat. Rollins is out. So is Brown. It's Brown who makes the catch. When Rollins looked at Dominic Brown, Dominic must have said something to, to let Jimmy know that he had a beat on it. I hope he said I got it. Well, but he looked like he was so far away from it when Jimmy peeled off. Well, that thing is so high that your left fielder has to come and get this. It's a much more difficult play for the. See, he's, I got yeah, it. I got it. That's I, when Jimmy peeled yeah, off. That's a YOLO tango. Well, now two outs. Lorenzo Kane, the batter. Infielders love that sound too, when they're going out for a difficult pop-up sun. They want to be called off. Kane is one for six with a couple runs scored during the series for the Royals. Change up outside, two and zero. Oh. Now the conditions, it's beautiful. Partly cloudy, around 60 degrees. Out in the sunshine today, it is comfortable. It's supposed to be even better tomorrow. You see the flags are not blowing straight in left to right, and that's always a good sign if you want warm weather. We're starting to get a little bit different direction, and that's going to help in the next few days to warm things up around here. You should have been a weatherman, Wills. Why? You know all that stuff. Oh well, that's pretty. Well, that's pretty easy. Inside and low, three and one. Blowing left to right, northwest wind. That's usually chilly, right? I guess, yeah. It is. <laughs> that's meteorology 101. I, I didn't have that class. Oh, well, we had to take it. it was off the hands out to right field Carrera coming on he dives and he makes the catch. He stammered just a little bit at the start and then had to make up for it by leaving his feet after the leadoff walk Hamels gets three straight balls to his outfield including this one by Ezekiel Carrera on his introduction to Philadelphia. Happening here at Citizens Bank Park every morning from 6 until 8 a.m. It's eye opener. It's a different kind of morning news show. And as we go to the bottom of the second, it's 4 0. Phillies on top, swinging a miss by Hamels, and it's 0 1. Phillies scored four runs in the first inning against James Shields. First time for Shields since September 21st, 2010, that he gave up at least four runs in the first inning of the game. That's 70 starts. That was against the Yankees. That's why it's so big to hit a pitcher like him with an inning like that. Hamill strikes out on three pitches. Because depending, you may not get a whole lot, if anything, off him the rest of the time he's out there.
Time to take a look at our Hyundai defensive play of the game. Wills, we already had it. Yeah, Ezekiel Carreri froze a little bit on that. Didn't read it right away. But then they say he has tremendous speed. And watch, see right there, he freezes. Now I say, oh, I better come in. And he reacted well and catches the ball. And then he took a heck of a ribbing in the dugout because they were probably saying, no, man, you could have caught that about eye high. Probably thought he could, too, after yeah. he looks at it, realizes that he was slow to get it rolling. It's nice that he was able to recover, though. Bet. Five pitches, five strikes for Shields to start the second. Ben Revere got the four run rally started in the first with an infield single. Juan Pierre had a three run home run here last year off James Shields in that game that was played at Citizens Bank Park when he was with the Rays. Jimmy Rollins homered off him. One dramatic fashion by Jim Tomey with a walk off home run. Well, maybe that's a good sign for Ben Revere if Juan Pierre homered against James Shields last year. <laughs> maybe Pierre, who's got 1,012 official at bats without a home run in his big league career, maybe he's due today. <laughs> he's due at some point. And a call, strike three, back to back strikeouts for Shields. Yeah, this is what can happen with a guy like Shields. Three strikeouts and two outs here in the second. He has such good stuff and he can paint with his pitches. And then you see him run that thing away on the outside part of the plate. Rollins takes a strike on the off speed pitch. That was a curveball from Shields. It's 0 1. He's up four nothing. Four runs in the first. That was a tough play for Ashley. That ball was was ricocheting every which way. She knocked it down though. Good job. Up the first base line. Billy Butler will stroll over to first. It's a 1 2 3 second for James Shields. So the Phillies go down quietly there, half of the second. We go to the third. The Phil's up by four over KC. Series and you see the T-shirt that Emily is wearing down the right field line as she's signing autographs and Ashley's got down the left field line the two Philly ball girls who are working today. Well, all fans 15 and older will receive that T-shirt. It's compliments of McDonald's. Make your plans now. There are seats still available. Get a chance to see uh, Roy Halladay pitch tomorrow for the Phillies. 7:05 first pitch. It's a sharp looking T-shirt. Over the years. If you've come to uh, each of the games where we've given out that T-shirt, compliments of McDonald's, you have a pretty good collection going. It's Matt Harvey against Roy Halliday tomorrow. 
As we go to the third, Chris Getz bunts up the first base line. This is going to be a tough play, and Howard can't get to him. That was a really good bunt for the first hit of the day for, for the Royals. He has to make a split second decision there on whether Hamels can beat the uh, batter gets to first base or whether he can beat him. Cole breaks. He wasn't going to get there. So Ryan Howard takes a shot. Him. That's just a really good job by Getz. Well, now Shields could bunt to move the runner up into scoring position if he so chooses. And he takes low. Want to know? Shields is seven for 37 lifetime. A 189 hitter. Just jabbed at it. Shields had a sacrifice bunt last year. Looks at Eddie Rodriguez for some signs. Well, you would think they would continue to try and get a bunt down here, get a runner in a scoring position, maybe pick up a run that way as opposed to him hitting into a double play if he swings away. Bunts it in the air. Kratz will make the catch. So he will take that. One out. Let's go back to the top of the order for Alex Gordon. And with that, Let's welcome in Greg Murphy. Murph, how's it going today, buddy? That's going very well, T-Mac. And uh, a lot of Phillies fans may be sitting at home and wondering, who is Ezekiel Carrera? Well, uh, we're going to try to answer that question for you. The Phillies, of course, picked him up on waivers earlier this week from the Cleveland Indians. Wheels, as you mentioned, they love his speed. The guy sold 26 bases a year ago. He hit for a pretty good average as well for Cleveland in the time that he was up. Now, you, you mentioned that he froze a little bit on that ball, that uh, line drive out to right field. It might be because... The lack of experience out there in right field, just seven major league starts in right field, over 70 in center field. So still learning that position, but a pretty good start for him uh, so far in the Phillies uniform, guys. Yeah, and Murph, Ruben uh, Amaro was talking about him the other day. He thought he was bringing a, p a player over here to put on the roster that Charlie might think about using once in a while. And that sure worked out today. Yeah, he obviously replaces Endar Inciarte, who uh, was sent back to Arizona in the Rule 5. But, uh, you know, he's a guy that has the same kind of tools. He's got speed. He can play all three outfield positions. He's played 45 games, actually, in left field in his major league career as well. And we saw last night he can run the bases, too. So he is a guy that Charlie can use, and he's decided to use him this Sunday afternoon. I think the other thing, too, you pointed out, is that he has major league experience. He's a year older than Ender Inciarte, and he has... Well, he's got obviously more major league experience than Inciarte does by a wide margin. Yeah, you're talking about an A ball player in Inciarte as opposed to a guy who has played in the major leagues. Big difference. Yeah, he said the other day that it was kind of a tense situation when he was uh, waived by the Indians because he wasn't sure where he was going to go. He was in Columbus uh, training and he said he was just hoping he would get a major league deal somewhere. Outside, ball four. These last couple pitches were pretty close by Hamels. But Eric Cooper is not budging. That's the second walk for Cole. And it puts two on with one out for Escobar. Wheels, it's time now for the Dodge Stump the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information. You can submit your answer on the subject line. Name the one other Royal who won a batting title besides George Brett. Wheels is nodding think with I a know. little affirmation. I think I know that. Well, we'll see. But I know the fans will get that. Escobar struck out his only time up. Philly set up for two. Here at the top of the third. Yeah, there's a good time for Eric Kratz to go out there because, as Tom mentioned, Hamill's a little bit upset with some of the pitches. Thought they were close. They, are, they look like they're balls, but they are close. And uh, this team certainly proved the other day that they can throw up a crooked number on you in a hurry. And you don't want to help them by walking batters. Pitching behind a lot of guys all of a sudden. He just needs to have one guy roll one over here for a double play, get out of the inning, like maybe Escobar. He 
fires a fastball for strike one, two and one. Hamill certainly has been able to front run during his career. Two and one the count the pitch. Off the end of the bat a flare down the right field line a fair ball. And it hits off the wall. Carrera is able to backhand it one run scores Gordon stops at third. And it's a 4 1 ball game. There you go. You put base runners on and walk him and then all of a sudden they may dunk one in and now they got a big boy coming up. RBI double second double of the year for Escobar. Makes a pretty good pitch to him here. He fooled him with a changeup, hits it right off the end of the bat and inside the line. It's a pretty good job by Carrera over here. This thing takes a crazy carom off the seats. Right? Well, you'll see it. And then he surrounds it very well and makes sure that he keeps the second and third. Yeah, because Gordon was heading home. Sure. That ball had been bobbled. Billy Butler takes outside. It's one and zero. And just like that, when it looks like everything's going real well, you get the tie and run up with these guys. And Butler 0 for one, hit one back to the box his first time up. One for five in the series with an intentional walk. Fouls it away. One and one the count. Forty two pitches for Hamels and you see the ball strike ratio not necessarily what you expect from Cole. No he's missing a lot today. Pitches so well in this ballpark too. Cutter inside and low two and one. This guy's looking to launch right now. You can tell with that back leg swing he had at that. And he can hit him. Walked out of the stadium with him last night. He's an unbelievably pleasant guy. Gordon's over at third. Escobar's at second. And it's two and two the count to Billy Butler. Change up. Hit towards shortstop. Run's going to score. Rollins though has time to throw out Butler. It's a 4 2 ball game. There's that rollover for a double play you wanted, but unfortunately they doubled before that, so you didn't have the situation. This is just what they did the other day. They cut it in half from 4 4 zip to 4 2. Here's Salvador Perez. He's ready to hit, but Butler was taking his time getting back to the dugout. Escobar is at second. Runner goes. Pitch is taken for a strike and no throw. Well, he took advantage of the fact they never looked back at him. I don't know if they're even that concerned with him. Stealing third with two outs. They're having trouble getting together this inning. There's been a lot of wipe offs and step offs. Oh, and two the count is Perez fouls that ball back. Off the hands over toward the middle of the diamond. Rollins is over. Side is retired. But the Royals do score two. They get one on a double by Escobar, another one on a ground out by Butler. We go to the bottom of the third here in Philadelphia. Phil's four and the Royals two.
Go places. Buy Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And buy Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Beautiful day for baseball. It's nice to have a day game. Sun is shining. It's getting a little warmer here in Philadelphia. Philly's uh, on top four to two. And they'll send Chase Utley, Ryan Howard, Michael Young to the plate against James Shields. So the 4 nothing lead has been whittled down to a 4-2 lead. Let's see if the Phillies can get back at it against Shields, who gave up the four runs in the first, but then retired them in order in the second. Utley rips one in the right field of base hit. He got a high fastball and he drilled it into right. Yeah, there it is. The high fastball gets on top of it. Base hit. Now they're going to shift again for Ryan Howard, but they can't play deep with the second baseman, so it gives him some more room. Now, last time up, he kept thinking he was going to get a fastball. He didn't get fastballs. What do you think? He's going to get a fastball to start this at back? I wouldn't throw him one after watching the swings the first time up, unless you think he's going to take. Well, he starts him off with. A curveball and it's 0 and 1. Toyota Major League scoreboard. Marlins are shutting out the Mets 3 0. Donovan Solano has three hits, a double, an RBI. Mets will be here tomorrow with Doc against Matt Harvey. So Harvey last year, he's a good looking young pitcher for the Mets. He had a good opener too for New York this year. Shields just held the ball that time where they didn't wasn't comfortable with the pitch where they thought Utley was going to go and he wanted to stop him. He's got that dipsy doodle stretch motion like Davis the other day. Maybe it's something they were taught in the raise system. Thinking the same thing. <laughs> They're both from over there. Just don't. Maybe they did it before. We just don't see them enough. Another off speed pitch to Ryan Howard. Was well, it good to see Chase Utley hitting line drives the way that he is? All over the place, too. Well, that and the way he's running the bases, too. No, oh, yeah. It's back to the way he used to be. His legs are good. Little dribbler up the first base line. Utley will get to second. And Howard's retired. Nobody was at third. Utley was caught. <laughs> Perez started going up the third base line. Chase thought about going. And then he saw the catcher coming down the line. That's what the catcher has to do is get down there with that shift and cover third base. And he did. Or he would have run to third. But Ryan Howard got another off speed pitch there and just topped it. No, Chase Utley thinking with Ryan Howard batting, I may have something over there if everybody falls asleep because third base could be left unoccupied. And that's the way he plays the game. He's always thinking ahead on what could happen. So he comes real hard around second in case the catcher didn't come down there. Now Michael Young. Young singled his first time up. Takes a strike, 0 and 1. 93 on that fastball from Shields. The base hit for Michael Young is sixth of the year. Young has uh, has had seven years in which he's hit over 300 or more. He also has 11 consecutive seasons with 150 hits or more. That's the fourth longest active streak. In baseball, Jeter has 17, Pujols has 12, and Ichiro has 12. Six times over 200 hits. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Young. Opposite way, base hit it to right field. Now Utley had to hold up to make sure it wasn't caught, so he'll stop at third. It'll be first and third with one out. A reminder for Budweiser: great times are waiting. 
designated driver. That's a perfect example of why Michael Young has so many hits in the major leagues because he'll use the whole field. He hits a lot of balls with the right of second base too and hard. It's good base run as Tom said by Chase Utley because he couldn't tell that that ball might may not be caught so you don't want to get doubled off. Now fly ball and get him in. Dominic Brown singled his first time up. Phillies now with seven hits. They throw over to first. Young is back. Kind of miss that old fake to third. Throw to first move. Well, somebody's going to do it this year, and, and it's going to be a balk. Yeah, they'll forget. New rule that was added for this year. They throw behind Utley. The throw was high, and fortunately Utley was able to get back. Boy, this guy likes to throw. And what an arm. Utley is very aggressive with walking leads, and he almost got a little bit too aggressive. He right there, his he sailed the throw a little bit. Yeah, he's going. Uh oh, well, what he did too, he did a great job of getting back and block and, and getting in the line of the throw, picking up where the infielder was, so maybe he get hit. I'm watching him take his walking leads because he comes down a good and then he always pirouettes and heads back into fair territory then. Everything's done with a purpose. Uh, he doesn't do anything half speed. So we see if Dominic Brown maturing as a, as a hitter you hope. Can get into a two strike mode now in a defensive situation and hit a fly ball. Just protect and put the ball in play to the outfield. The Shields will try to trick him. Now he threw him a backdoor cutter. And according to Eric Cooper, it did go backdoor on the outer half, so two outs. Big pitch. Now two outs. They'll leave it for Eric Kratz. Kratz had a sack fly his first time up. Back with a fastball in the inner half, swung out and missed. It's 0 and 2. Both these pitchers have the ability to keep the hitters off balance. So they'll pitch backwards. They also can hit their spots. Above average fastballs and real good off speed stuff. Stays alive. And this at bat is going away in away. And that's what I mean about keeping hitters off balance with location and and changes of speed. And that's what that's what pitching's all about. Aaron Rowan's cousin, James Shields. Wearing number 33 too. Yeah. Back there, 95. That's the hardest ball he's thrown today, but he left it out over the plate a little bit. And it remains 0 and 2. Almost looks like he's trying to get him out of way in this at bat. He's thrown 49 pitches, but his splits are pretty good. A lot of strikes. 
Sometimes guys, even veteran pitchers, can throw too many strikes. Kratz is rung up, so back to back strikeouts for Shields, and he leaves two, including Utley over at third. Five strikeouts overall. We've completed our first three. We move to the fourth with the Phillies up four to two. Cup of Green Mountain Coffee. Look out, Dominic. K Cups delivered in all the flavors you love. By who? But W.B. Mason. Philly's up four to two. Dominic Brown has a base hit so far today. He's also gone down on strikes. He'll go back to work in the outfield. And Cole Hamels. Cole struggled some all with his command in the third. He gave up the two runs, but he's only allowed two hits. He's walked a couple. And he'll face Frank Core, Moustakis, and Lorenzo Kane. Frank Core fly out to center his first time up. Waves of the change up 0 1. Now both pitchers dominant in terms of their uh, change up. Both of them go separate ways. Good fastball. Cole Hamels throws his almost as if it's a uh, kind of a screwball as it goes away from the right handed batter. That's what makes it so tough that not only does he have good arm motion on it, has good movement on the ball. Well, so does Shields from the opposite side. Good change up. Frank Core fouls it back. Well, if you look at the number of two strike. Swings and misses in Major League Baseball a season ago. Kendrick, with his changeup, has the most 51%. Hamels, 49%. Shields, 47%. Those are three of the top five in baseball. As Utley just barely gets Frank Cor. And now one out in the fourth. I thought that was kind of interesting. He kind of expected it from, from Hamels. We didn't know a whole lot about Shields just because we've watched him from a distance, uh, but we knew he had a good changeup. But also yeah. Kendrick, Kendrick's sitting atop that list. Yeah, he's actually come up with a better pitch there, Kendrick, and he needs that pitch just for the left-handed batters keep him off of that fastball and also that cutter that he throws in. Every pitcher needs to have an out pitch of some sort, especially when you get into uh, any kind of problems, men in scoring position. You want to be able to throw a pitch that you have confidence in that you can get a hitter out with. Yeah, with Cole, he has confidence throwing it. It doesn't matter when. I mean, that's the first curveball I think he's thrown uh, since the first inning. But the changeup, he'll throw. He could be behind 3-0 and he'll throw it. <laughs> well, he said he can throw it in his sleep. You're right. I think that breaking ball, a uh, hard breaking ball, would be a little better to the left-handers. No balls and two strikes to count to Moustakis. Great year, too, though, for Cole Hamill. Career highs and wins and 
strikeouts, 216 strikeouts. So he is coming into his own, and he's only going to get better. How about that broken bat right there? That's what you call getting into your kitchen right there. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Braves trail the Cubs 1 0 in the bottom of the fourth. Anthony Rizzo has an RBI for Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I think they took Carlos Marmol, their closer. He's not closing anymore. I think they're kind of tired of going up and down, walks and so on. So they're going to have another closer, supposedly. Well, here's the thing I mean, no offense, but. How did it take that long? I mean, it's been years we've been saying that you know, well, if, if he was, I, I know think, he's been good at times, but he's also been erratic at I times. I think what they were really trying to do is get him in a situation where he was pretty consistent. Some other team take a look at him and then uh, get rid of him that way. But you're right. It did take a long time, but every time he seems to go out there, there's no lead that he has is safe. Yeah, Keiji Fukikawa. Is the new closer for the the Cubs? Three and zero the count to Lorenzo Cain. Cain thought that might have been a strike. He was hesitating, thinking, "All right, I'm going to hear it any moment," but he never heard it. So three walks now for Hamels. By the way, in that Cubs game, Jeff Samarja has 10 strikeouts through four innings of work. Wow. From Notre Dame. Got to the major leagues pretty quick. Well, usually those pitchers, especially if you have a good arm, you got command of your pitches. Coming out of college, you have a good chance of getting to the major leagues pretty Pretty quick these days. Don't have to have the number of innings like they had in the past. Well, he's good. I, I always wonder oh, if, if there was a uh, if there was a threat of playing football that loomed over the Cubs' head that he might leave to do that because he's a good football. Player. Well, you know what? I think Jim Henry told him, "Hey, listen, you come to the Cubs, you'll be in the major leagues before long." Easy to predict that. Well, Kane stumbled as Hamels had him picks, and Rollins. Oh, he finally gets to him. <laughs> Boy, Lorenzo Kane kept on building, building, yeah. building, and Rollins was going to tag, 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 and then finally at the last moment, he caught up to him. Yeah, not going to beat him in this race here, as you see him coming across. Take a look at him. You're not going to be out running him. We'll be back in a minute. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most innovative lineup. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Buy WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy Citizens Bank, where good banking is good citizenship. Isn't it time you experience good banking? 
and by Chevrolet. Visit your local Chevy dealer or ChevyDealer.com today. Four to two, Phillies, bottom of the fourth. It'll be Carrera, Hamels, and Revere. This play was awfully close. Yeah. Well, once he figured that he wasn't going to throw it, and, you know, Rollins not going to be outdone, and he did tag him as he gets out of the way. I guess as he slid feet first, I don't know if Rollins thought this. He's like, well, he's going to have to pull up a little bit and lean back. I'll have a chance to keep accelerating. Yeah, I'm not giving him that much credit. I'm just thinking he was going to tag him out. Usually a player is going to go back, though, on his stomach, kind of diving. But each right. way will get you there a little bit slower. I'm going to give him credit. You are? Yeah, I'm going to give him credit. We're going to ask him about it. Okay, we will. That he knew he was going to slide, therefore he Correct. would just. No. Uh -uh. Didn't happen? Not going to buy it. Nope. 2-0 pitch. On the outside corner, 2-1, and one, a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Side three and one. Mustakis was in on the grass the whole time. He'll stay in on the grass with the count three and one. Carrera stole 11 bases this spring. That's a lot of bases. Oh, it's right. Ben Revere stole 10. You know, in the, in the upside, too, though, when you have that speed, you talk about that. That's something that you can't teach. You can make a mistake in the outfield and be able to overcome it because of, of the speed. He pulls that one to the right side. Gets. Throws him out. One away. For years, StubHub has been the place to find great Phillies tickets. And this season, you can get more with your tickets thanks to StubHub Fan Rewards. So get to StubHub and grab your seats today. Hamels takes low, takes fastball low. It's a 1 0. Hamels is one for three this year. Well, that was a pitch that he probably could have driven as Lorenzo Kane makes the catch in shallow center. Boy. Well, he just made it miss hitting that ball a long way. Had pretty good mechanics on that fastball. He just popped it up maybe a little bit late on it. Want to be a little bit more aggressive, but he had a nice swing. Now with two outs, Ben Revere one for two. And Revere lines one right back up the middle. A two out single, he's two for three. Boy, my kind of hitter hitting that ball hard up the middle. A lot of good things can happen. Thursday, April 18th, will the Phillies take on the St. Louis Cardinals? It's the start of a four game series. All fans will receive the Expedex 2013 Phillies schedule magnet. What are your tickets now at Phillies.com? Jimmy Rollins, one for two. All right, we saw the other day when Rollins was up and Revere was in, on first that he swung at the first pitch. We think a little earlier in the game, maybe he'll give Revere a chance to get into scoring position against Shields. Well, those are things, too, that both of them should talk about. That's how, it, again, you get a chance to know your teammate and letting them know, hey, listen, give me a chance to steal. I'm going to try and go early in the count. We saw all during spring training when Ben did just that. Was pretty successful. When you have that kind of conversation with a, a fellow teammate, does anybody say no? Well, I mean, it just it, it depends. I mean, when you're talking, for instance, uh, and we'll bring him up with Mike. You know, we had a thing, a situation where if we were going to steal, if he got a fastball, okay to swing. 
that's the pitch he's looking for. I'm still in, and it's a breaking ball off speed. You can go in and take that. You have a good chance on an off-speed pitch to be able to steal the, the base. They call for the pitch out, and the Phillies might have been expecting it with the count 0-2. Yeah, they don't run on pitch out. Usually, too, uh, managers these days, you know, they'll call back-to-back, -back, see whether or not Mr. Yost there, the manager, will go back-to-back. -back. A lot of times they won't do it, but this guy is a guy you would because he has excellent control. Revere doesn't go. Rollins hits it foul past Juan Samuel. Nice play right there. And it's 0 and 2 to Rollins. Or I should say 1 and 2 to Rollins. There goes Revere. Pitch is low. The throw to second, a little wide, and Revere has stolen his third base of the season. So he gets good, good jumps. Fearless when he's running. Just puts more pressure on him and pressure too. There on Perez, he hasn't really thrown a ball the way that. He wants to right now, and I mean throwing it on the back. He's had the reputation coming in here as a good defensive catcher. Yeah, I went down and uh, actually met him today in the clubhouse. He's a big guy. I just say, does he remind you of Sandy Almar Jr.? And, and Big like that, but throwing to the bases. Boy, I don't know if he reminds me of uh, of anybody other than maybe Pudge Rodriguez, who would throw to base, third base, second base, first base. Took a lot of pride when guys were, were stealing on him, and he feels the same way. I can think of uh, Benito Santiago, Tony Pena, guys like that. Yeah. Got here Molina, the throw to bases, doesn't matter where. Yeah, and he's as big as Sandy Alomar Jr., though, in terms of. His weight, his height. And a swing and a miss. Rollins is struck out. He went after what looked to be a changeup from Shields. And the Phillies leave one in scoring position. So they've left a couple in scoring position the last couple of innings. We go to the fifth. and all the nerd humor you could handle. I know yours is, Sarge. The most watched comedy in Philly is still the Big Bang Theory. You can see it weeknights at 7 and 7.30 right here on PHL 17. 
Chris gets uh, takes a strike to begin the fifth four to two Phillies on top. Hamels has walked three but he's allowed only two hits so far. Picking up really where John Lannon left off last night. Lannon was very strong in his Phillies debut in seven innings. Couldn't ask for much more than what John Lennon did tonight or did last night for the Phillies. Yeah. Out to right field. Carrera got turned around and leaps it. He can't get it. And gets a pull in the second with his third extra base hit of the series. It's a tough play simply because it was hit right at him. You know, again, too, and he's been used to playing center field a lot. You get on the corners take a look at it. It's a solid line drive turned him around and then that ball broke back the other way almost end up catching it. He has a bead on the ball. Take a look at it and it just out over the glove. Pretty good try. How about this Shields is not up there to try to bunt at least not that first pitch. Well now he holds the bat as if he's ready to bunt. You would think that you would want your pitcher in this situation there to bat. But well, that's been doing some hitting somewhere around in his career. See, he's doing a little bit of peeking back there. When you peek too, you can't just really look back. You kind of just kind of look down at the the ground there, and you can kind of see exactly where the catcher is. You can feel them when they're inside there on you. Well, he got him. Shields is down on strikes. See, and the other thing too, Yos can think because of his club hitting the way that they have all spring training that. Two runs is no big deal for his club. Therefore, he can go on and let his, his pitcher go on and swing. I'd rather go on and have him bunt, have him in scoring position for me. Well, have him over third so he right? can score in a fly well, ball. Easier to score when you're on third base. Yeah, we, he felt he had a better chance just making contact. Yeah, we've seen Charlie do that before, but I think that he's done it with Lee and Hamels, who are more accomplished hitters yep. as pitchers. Good job by Kratz keeping that ball in front. Then you're not trying to catch the ball, just just trying to block it. Take a look at him as he moves his feet. See there, and he's just trying to block the ball. He did a good job keeping it in front. John Lennon who pitched so well last night for the Phillies. Five strikeouts, five hits, seven innings. Well, he did a great job. A lot of ground balls he he had going on last night. Hey, these guys. What you want about these Kansas City hitters? They have pretty good at bats for the most part, making the pitcher pitch, hitting them, hitting counts like 3 1 is pretty good accomplishment. Well, got away with that high fastball. Maybe he can do that again. And get one call. 3 2 pitch to Gordon. And he hits it foul. Just past the third base coach's box.
Gordon is a back to back gold glove winner for the Royals. It says a lot because he was drafted as a third baseman. Back toward the middle, off the glove of Hamels, diving stop by Rollins, no play at first. At least I think it hit Hamels' glove. It looked like it slowed up somehow. So first to third, that'll be a base hit. Well, that's clearly saving a run by diving, stopping this ball. Let's see whether or not it hits the glove no, or not. Pretty hard to tell. But as it hit the ground, that ball started coming back the other way. J. Rowe, instead of catching it and extending out, almost had to bring his hands back in. One of the reasons he wasn't able to get up and throw. So the Phillies set up the middle infield for two. They've got Young in on the grass at third for Escobar. And Escobar takes inside. It's 1 0. Oh. Good pitch. But he is awfully close with a lot of these pitches. Yeah. And Eric Cooper has consistently, consistently chosen a ball instead of a strike. Yeah, the ones that he would want would be the ones inside that would be low or the ones away off the corner. He did call a 3 1 borderline fastball. Eric Cooper, home plate umpire. You'd rather not him even call those. You'd rather get the ones again that are just off the plate. 3 0 to count now to Escobar with Butler on deck. Hamels at 78 pitches so far with one out here in the fifth. He has seven three ball counts in this game. That's an awful lot for him. There's Butler. Ball four and that's four walks issued by Hamels today. As Rich Doobie goes out to the mound let's take a look at our Mazda leaders and you see the. The strikeout to walk ratio Hamels among the best in all of baseball among active pitchers Shields is there so is Halliday and Lee which you expect well today Cole has four walks to the two strikeouts. So some pretty good arms right there. Yeah. He needs this ground ball double play. Butler, pretty big guy. Good candidate for that. Also, one of the best hitters on this Royals team. Well, we mentioned last night he uh, won the Edgar Martinez Award for the best designated hitter in baseball last year in the American League. Takes it to the oh, below the knees. It's 1 0. Pretty pretty good clutch hitter last year too. Hit 29 bombs, 10 of those after the eighth inning or more. Now that is doing a job, and that is that's what you call clutch hitting. You're going deep late in the ball game. That one's hit well to left field. Brown going back toward the wall. He jumps, and that one is in play. It's still alive. Brown doesn't know where it is. That'll clear the bases, and Butler will pull into second base with a three run double, and the Royals take a 5 4 lead. And Ned Yost is going to go out to talk to Jeff Kellogg. He's probably going to want to replay to see if that ball went out of the yard or not well, and was a grand slam instead of a three run double. Well, it may be a home run, but the fact is, you got to go into your Academy Award. You got to play that ball as if. It's still inside, and yes, it was out. You can see it clearly going over that fence and then back. Yeah, so if they review it, they're going to meet, and they are yeah. going to review it, I would think. It's going to turn out to be a grand slam for Billy Butler. They will take a look at the same video that we have. And that last shot that we saw was pretty clear. Well, there's no secret. I mean, even the guys down in the dugout with all the different cameras you have, Yost would know right away. Hey, that ball's out of here. Now this is what you're looking at. 
Okay, now it's out, and the one that gave it away, I mean, he'll show you right away, Brown, it was out because his glove is just about right where the ball would be. If it wasn't, he did have and did get up. But yep. they're all saying home run. Uh, the Royal players saying, come on in. Well, the umpires have gone underneath the stadium to take a look at it. And they will emerge after seeing the same shots that we have seen that and say it's a home run. So here comes Eric Cooper and Jeff Kellogg signals home run. It's a grand slam for Billy Butler. So now it's six to four in favor of the Royals as they have wiped away for the second time in this series a four run deficit. Well there's no question Tom these guys can bang. They can hit the ball and when you play this club you're going to just have to out hit them. You got to bang. You got to. You got to hit the ball, return the favor. Six runs now on five hits. This is where the pitch was. Just Ooh. talk about this guy being a good hitter, probably the best hitter on his team. The only thing he doesn't do well is run. But when you're trotting, you don't have to run run fast. Well, that's his first career grand slam. Perez pops it up. Rollins, the shortstop, makes the catch. Two outs here in the fifth. And I guess it didn't matter that they had James Shields swing away instead of bunt. Well, I mean, you can tell the way he, part, uh, well, the, the, the way he's managing this club. You know, if he feels, hey, the guy doesn't have a chance to get the ball down by looking at him bunt, let him swing. And you got other guys in the lineup. They've been doing this all spring training. Frank Core takes it inside. It's one and zero. First home run of the year for Billy Butler. He has five RBIs today. He had one coming in. At the knees, one and one. The other part of it too, Sarge, is the inning began with that ball that gets hit. That kind of turned Carrera around in right field. Yep. Some right fielders would have made that catch. That would have been the first out, and then the Shields at bat would have been number two. Well, it's a real good point. You can see how we have to start pitching even more and more careful. But for me, before you get to Butler, you got to almost make those other guys hit the ball. Don't mean throwing it right down the middle, but Cole has the control where he can put the ball just about where he wants. Ooh, nice catch by a gentleman, but five rows over the Phillies dugout, glove in hand. And he just pulled that line drive in. There he is. Hamels had such a good spring training that these two, these first two outings are somewhat odd. To have his earned run average at 10.24. You know, look at the, the inning he's had. This is the 28th pitch. And Frank Coor stays alive. James Shields, meanwhile, who had a terrible first inning, has danced out of trouble the last two innings on the mound, and yeah. now has a two run lead. One two pitch. Fouls it away again. Still a long way to go. Not usually pitchers will settle down, but they've had pretty good at bats there against Fields. Twenty pitches in the third, thirty here in the fifth, and Frank Core loops it to center field for a base hit. Yeah, pretty good hitting ball down and away. Well, every hit is just not a bad pitch when a pitcher throws the ball. Sometimes you got to give the hitter 
some credit. Oh, Mustakas is 0 for 2. He jammed him the last time and he popped out to Howard. Runner goes. Pitch is taken for a strike and no chance for Kratz to throw out Frank Court. Yeah, he's going on first uh, movement. End up still in and he did. He stole that that particular base off of Cole Hamels, just getting it in throw. Take a look at it. First movement, he's off and running. No chance at all for him to even throw the ball. Popped up. Rollins out at shortstop is under it. And he makes the catch. So the Phillies, who have played from behind several times in this series, will play from behind again. Eight men come to the plate. Billy Butler's first home run of the year. It was a grand slam, his first career grand slam. His teammates knew it before the umpires did, but they cleaned it up, and it's a 6 4 lead. Available for your iPhone, iPad, Android, BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Phillies baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text that bat to 31826 or visit Phillies.com for more details. Phillies down by two. It's 6 4 as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Chase at least two for two against Shane Shields. And he starts him off with a curveball, and it's 0 and 1. Chase off to a great start this year. Need to get a few of those teammates to start to follow him. Uh, borderline. Holds and it's one and two. Hasn't used it a lot, but he does have that two seamer where he starts it right at the hip of Utley, and that ball has a tendency to cross on that inside part of the plate. Utley with his two hits today is zeroing in on 1,300 hits for his career. Hit his 200th home run earlier this week. Ninth all time for the Phillies in home runs. Hits that one the other way. Gordon going back on it. And he makes the catch. Well, it's time now to take a look at the Major League Notebook. So with that. We bring Murph back in. Murph, take it away. All right, thanks a lot, Team Mac. I'm brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy College, of course. And Freddie Freeman in his 417 batting average has landed on the DL. The Atlanta Braves first baseman has a strained oblique. 
He's been playing with it the whole season and playing pretty well, but Atlanta Braves management decided to put him on the shelf so you won't see Freddie Freeman for a little while. And the Brewers are also a little bit banged up. Aramis Ramirez on the 15-day DL as well. He's got a strained knee. And also Ryan Braun has not played in either of their last two games. He is battling a sore neck. So early injuries in Major League Baseball uh, playing a part for some of these teams, guys. Murph, uh, you got a birthday party going on out there? Yeah, there is a birthday party happening right here, uh, right, there, right outside the Hall of Fame Club. Uh, happy birthday right here to D. 80 years young today. Wow. Here celebrating. Oh, congratulations, D. She doesn't look a day over 50, I told her. She looks great. Yes, she does. The guys say happy birthday. Did you bring him a cake, Murph? Uh, no. No. Oh. Somebody, somebody brought her a cake. I'm sure someone did. Yeah. <laughs> it's one ball and one strike to Ryan Howard. Yeah, uh, Ryan Braun received um, two awards yesterday, the Silver Slugger Award. And I, I think he received, well, it was one other award. I don't remember what it was. But he was holding both awards, and he, he wasn't moving. Like, his head was just as still as could be because of that stiff neck. Yeah. Well, again, too, though, you never know when you're going to have injuries. You don't want to see anybody hurt. But with Freeman hurt with the Atlanta Braves in our division, he's a huge part of their attack. Want to be able to take advantage of it when they come in. Howard tried to hold. He went around, says Jeff Kellogg. And that's seven strikeouts now for James Shields. Well, the thing is, on that pitch, it's a ball almost when it leaves his hand. You know, you got to be able to be disciplined enough. This guy can't throw the ball by you, so you shouldn't have to cheat. Don't know whether or not he swung it or, or not, but when you're out that far, they're going to call it on you. So you might as well stay back. You're going to look for the curveball. you got to make sure the curveball is up, not starting down. Michael Young takes a strike. It's 0-1. It's the old adage. you got to hit the low fastball. You hit the high curveball. And if you're looking at it any other way, you're not going to have the results that you want to have. Plain and simple. They can get back in this game. I mean, you're only two runs down. Pretty soon that pride will be able to kick in when you're up there at that plate. And you'll have better at bats. No one wants to be embarrassed, especially on this level. You know, everybody's going to strike out, but just make sure that that pitcher knows that you're in one heck of a fight when you're out there. Line drive, base hit toward left field. Michael Young has a three-hit day. On his way to second, Gordon's throw. He's got a good arm. He's cut off. Two singles and a double for Michael Young. Good Nine hitting. hits now for the Phillies. Good hitting, turning on a fastball. Fastball in. Take a look at it. Right over the plate as he turns on it. See how he clears his hips. For you youngsters out there, that fastball that's inside, you clear your hips, and you can get that uh, bat right around. You don't want to pull off of the ball to hit an inside pitch. Nine hits now for the Phillies. They're down 6-4, and they've got a runner in scoring position. They've left two in scoring position in the last three innings. Some of the guys with Shields out there pitching, he's not even throwing them a strike. I mean, if you don't show that you are disciplined enough or that you don't know the strike zone, he's not going to throw you strikes. you got to make these guys throw you strikes. And Shields is one of those pitchers that hey, he has great control. But, again, if you, you see that you're swinging at it in the dirt, guess what? He's going he's gonna to throw it in the dirt. Brown is one for two, has an RBI. He struck out looking his last time up. Shields has seven strikeouts today. And now the 0 1 pitch to Brown will have to wait as Shields steps back towards second. Now 
don't know if that was as much to keep Michael Young close or he didn't like the pitch that was selected. Well, probably a little of both. Wow. It's a good fastball. One of his better fastballs today, 94. Had it in a bad spot, though, almost right down the middle. To the left side and scooped up by Mustakis. And Brown is thrown out. Phillies leave another in scoring position. Michael Young's two out double goes to a waste. Well, they're celebrating birthdays here at the ballpark and they're hoping to celebrate a Phillies victory. of the week is the 30 year old utility player in his second season with the Phillies. Kevin France had stepped up when Charlie Manuel called upon him last season and it has continued in 2013. Off the bench and into the spotlight at Citizens Bank Park Kevin delivered the biggest hit of the early season and the first home win for the fight in Phils. France had provided the frenzy and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Changing the game. Oh, Kevin Francis certainly electrified the crowd last night with his three run double that won the game for the Phillies. And now they trail at 6 4 as we go to the top of the sixth. That young lady's hoping for some runs, but she's also hoping for Cole Hamels to throw up a zero here in the top of the sixth. They'll face the bottom third, Kane, Getz, and Shields. And there's a strike. It's 0 1. Chad Durbin is warming in the bullpen for the Phillies. Hamels at 95 pitches for the day. There's Durbin. I'd like to get Cole through this inning, Sarge. He's due to bat third in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah. Well, that means no runs. And a base hit for Kane. That's his second of the series. Now he's not hitting for a high, uh, high average, but potentially this kid looks like he's going to be okay, fitting in very well with the Kansas City Royals. So his favorite player growing up was Torrey Hunter. He sort of patterns his game after Torrey Hunter. Hunter. I guess you can see that a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Torrey's put together those some great years and. Winning that gold glove, silver bat. They got Keen the last time. 
but Jimmy Rollins tracked him down to finish up the the fourth inning. I think he's going to be a little more careful this time. Ground ball towards second. Might be two. Up the quick flip to second for one. It is two. Four, six, three. Well, that certainly helps. All began with that quick flip by Utley and the quick turn by Rollins. It wasn't an easy hop either. He picks out the hop. They've been doing this for so long with each other. It almost seems to be old hat. They already know what position they're in. And take a look here at the, the peaks and valleys there. You know, and again, too, the consistency when you lose those leads, that's when. It seems to, to hurt you the most. You know, a game like last night, being able to come back, usually that next day you got a little pep in your step where, hey, you're feeling pretty good, maybe a little bit momentum. Jump on them from four, but now you need to come back again in this ball game to be able to have that same kind of feeling. It, 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 the thing about it, too, is that when you have a four-run lead, when you jump out to such an early lead, you just don't expect to give that up. Especially when you have one of your number ones. Well, that's true. But even on Friday with Kyle on the mound, I don't think anybody expected to give it up a four-run lead. No. Broken bat, looper to right center field, and Shields gets a base hit. But today, I, I, I would agree with you, even more so with Cole on the mound. You just don't expect to give up a four-run lead. You know, there was a graphic that popped up earlier that showed the success Hamels has had when given a four run lead. Said he's been one of the, the best front runners the Phillies have had. And that is true. But not today, but uh, still a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. And you want to chip away, though. I mean, when you score four runs uh, early in the ball game, you want to get another one here, two there. You know, you keep battling, you keep doing the little small things, getting them over, getting them in. Alex Gordon takes low. It's one to zero. And seeing all of that, there are times when you're going to have to come up with that two-out base hit to keep a rally going. Down the right field line, hooking. It's a fair ball heading into the corner. Shields on his way to third. Carrera having a little trouble in the corner, but they'll hold him at third base. It's a double for Gordon, second and third with two men down. And that may be the final hitter for Cole Hamels. Gordon's second hit of the day, his sixth hit of the series. Charlie Manuel's taking a look at his lineup card. He has Durbin in the bullpen. He's ready to go. With Escobar due up, they're going to do a double switch. It looks like he's bringing the lineup card out toward home plate. The pitcher spot is due up third in the bottom of the sixth inning. So that's going to be it for Cole Hamels. We'll see what other adjustments Charlie Manuel makes to his lineup. I figure it's a. You would think it's going to be for Dominic Brown, who was the last hitter. He made the last out yeah. in the bottom of the fifth inning, so you would think it's going to be an outfielder, but we'll see. So Chad Durbin's coming in. We've got an AT&T call to the bullpen here at Citizens Bank Park. Phillies down by two, and the Royals threatening again.
for today's ball game. The Royals on top six to four here in the top of the sixth. That you know they are a good hitting club. They have nine hits just like the Phillies do. Two runs by Gordon up top. One run by Escobar. So three runs scored by the first uh, two hitters. Yeah. The grand slam by Butler, the three-hole hitter. So they rolled the dice today. They had Butler start instead of Hosmer, and it obviously it's paid off. Well, I mean Butler, though. I mean they've said it before. He's, He's the their best, best hitter, hitter on, yeah. on the club. So having him in that lineup, I can bet it makes everybody else feel a lot better. And obviously, uh, with the grand slam, he's able to come up with some clutch hits. John Mayberry into the ball game to play left field. He'll be in the the nine hole as a hitter. Chad Durbin will take over Dominic Brown's spot in the order. Durbin two games so far. His earned run average a little high at this point at 27. Just a little high. And Escobar takes outside. It's one and zero. I think Durbin's ERA was infinity before his last outing, and he gave up a run, but it came down. Yeah. See, well, Shields off third. Difficult for the relievers. They have one bad or two bad outings. Pretty difficult to get that earned run average down. You just don't pitch the same amount of innings, obviously, as a starter. Escobar walked his last time. They came around to score in the grand slam by Butler. Usually when you have a guy like Butler hitting behind you, behind you, you're going to get some pretty good pitches to hit. Let's see whether or not he tries to trick him or Come right at him. Just walked Escobar for the second straight time to bring Butler up with the bases loaded again. Yeah, well, we said it earlier. I mean, if you're going to, you want to make someone hit the ball, he would be your candidate. Yeah, not Butler Escobar. Because this is what Butler did last time. Well, he's, look at that, though. He's short and quick to the ball. Bases loaded, two outs here at the top of the sixth. And Butler takes a strike. Just a matter of time before this kid starts to heat up. Been too consistent. Line drive, base hit, center field. Two runs are going to score for the Royals. Escobar goes to third and it's a seven RBI day for Billy Butler. It's an eight four ball game. Seven RBIs. Well, that can hit. Then he's just uh, he's short. Compact. Very strong. Take a look at him. See where his eyes went. Okay. Right down to the ball. Looked like he even saw the ball make contact to the bat. He can close the line on Cole. He's charged with all eight runs today. Wow. And all later earned at five and two thirds. Here's Salvador Perez with runners on first and third at two outs. Fly ball right center field. Carrera and Revere in the alleyway. It's Carrera who makes the call and he makes the catch. But the Royals tack on two more and a two run single by Billy Butler. He's driven in seven of the eight runs in this afternoon's ball game.
ignite your luck with the newest Pennsylvania Lottery Instant Games. Must be 18 years or older to play. Please play responsibly. By Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of your Phillies. And by Honda. Visit your Honda dealer today for great deals. Only a Honda is a Honda. 8-4 Royals on top. The Phillies had a 4-0 lead at one point, but then Billy Butler decided to show up today. Seven RBIs for Billy Butler. That ties the franchise record for most ribbies in a game. He is the 12th player to have seven RBIs, at least seven RBIs in a ball game for the Royals. Eric Kratz will lead it off against uh, James Shields. Kratz is 0 for 1 with a sack fly. I tell you though, when you're a catcher, you have double duty. Not only do you have to to call a game and you got to come up offensively and try and deliver. I'm going to have to ask him tomorrow about pitching with Cole. Were they actually on the same page? It seemed to me as if uh, Cole was actually stepping off some. So and a lot of times that has a lot to do with your whole psyche out there on the mound. No, I'm not actually making any excuses for Cole Hamels at all, but let's face it, in today's game, I mean, obviously you like to be able to be on the same page with your catcher, meaning you're not stopping, stepping off very much, you're getting that ball and you're throwing, therefore you're not thinking a lot. And I just thought a lot of thinking going on out there on pitches that he was, uh, that he was throwing. Yeah, just no rhythm or consistent rhythm. No, because usually, I mean, you give him, again, those type of runs, he usually can take that and run with it. And the rhythm that you're talking about, being able to consistently throw that change up when he wants to, get the hitters out in front, throwing that cutters in on them. Hamels today, five and two-thirds, nine hits, and a career-high eight earned runs allowed. Yeah, that's not him at all. Well, Doc will go tomorrow against the Mets. This one is far from over. But the Mets come to town for a three-game series. Halliday on the hill. Swing and a miss. One out. Eight strikeouts for Shields. Reminder, the Phillies have prorated partial plans that are available by going to Phillies.com. Ticket plans start at 12 games. They feature great benefits, including ticket discounts and postseason options. Great way to enjoy Phillies baseball and terrific promotions throughout the season. Carrera takes outside. Well, you got to give Shields credit. He has not been at his best today at all. Uh, but he does have eight strikeouts. Well, he's kept the ball out of the, the middle of the plate for the most part. And early in the game, even when the fight fields were getting hit, those balls were more so in the hole here off the end of the bat, you know, right there. So he probably felt, hey, listen, man, I can settle down, start making my pitches. And maybe the worst is over, in which it has been so far for him. He has settled down. But he's thrown a variety of different pitches from his fastball, mixed in that curveball, but more importantly, he's got it in a pretty good spot. He jabbed at it and missed it two and two the count to Carrera, who's 0 for 2. He's fly to right and he's also grounded out to second. Yeah, just trying to get on it any way that he possibly can, even though that ball would have been a ball. Round ball right side. He got him to swing at his pitch and he rolled over on it. It was a change up. It is the best pitch Shields has. And with two outs, John Mayberry will hit for the first time this afternoon. He throws just enough fastballs to be able to get that change up there over. Again, these are the type of pitchers that you got to sit on that, that one pitch. That you're looking for if you're trying to guess with them before you know it. 
with no balls and two strikes, now he can really kind of throw the pitches he wants to throw. He has excellent control. Mayberry so far this year, two for nine. Started the first two games of this year of the uh, season against the Braves. Up the third base line, it's a foul ball, and it's one and one. Phil's pretty durable pitcher. 30 starts last five years in a row. Yeah, six straight years we showed before with double digit wins. He's still less than 100 pitches as we have two outs here in the sixth. So that means he's been a, around the plate. There's a base hit for Mayberry. It's a left center field, and that one's going to roll toward the warning track and go to the wall. Mayberry will stop at second. A two out double. Right, Sarge, so that's four straight innings now. The Phillies have had a, a runner in scoring position. They were unable to score in the previous three. Let's see what they could do here with Ben Revere coming up. Yeah, that's a fastball there, and that's what he got on. He's going to continue to play. He's got to get aggressive on these fastballs. He's a fastball hitter. For me, he just takes too many of them, and he shows you what he can do when he's swinging the bat and being aggressive. Ben Revere has two hits today. He has scored a run. Royals bullpen starts to get up and work. They've got a left hander warming up. Looks like it's Collins. No one's hit hard right at Getz. He nearly pulled up on it, but was able to take the hop and retire Revere. Phillies leave one at second. Shields is through six. And all of a sudden he has a four run lead instead of a four run deficit as we go to the seventh. Little bit too similar to opening day to say the least. Phillies with the four to nothing lead and then outscored eight to nothing since that point. Billy Butler with a career, first career grand slam home run. He got it after the review. Phillies jumped on James Shields for four in the first inning. Nothing since. You wonder if Butler's going to be lifted as this game moves on as a defensive replacement with his team up eight to four, but he can hit as Frank Court takes a strike. It's one and one. Well, yeah, he's a heck of a DH, and they decided they're going to play him two games to take their chances over at first base, and it certainly paid up dividends. Frank Core almost corkscrewed himself into the ground. It's one and two. 
Yeah, that's what they've seen of him too. It also gets a feel. Hey, we played another National League park. We can run him out there again. Of course, single back in the fifth inning. Thing with Billy Butler is you, you want him to knock in more than he lets in. He's certainly doing that today by a wide margin. Frank Core drills one deep to left, but foul. Record for RBIs in a game against the Phillies is a Rubio Duraza nine. And he has seven. Time now for a course like Freeze Cam. This was his home run, his grand slam. Watch it go, watch it hit beyond the little fence. Now that's a tough one for the umpires to call with a naked eye because it bounced back so fast. And replay got the job done. Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Although they probably were given a little bit of a hint that it was over the fence just because Dominic Brown <laughs> just stopped at the wall. Well, I think they knew what they were going to see when they went in there. There's Billy Butler hit the grand slam. Frank Coors stays alive, fouls another one back. It's two and two. Really hurt was last inning, giving up two more with two outs and nobody on base and the pitcher up. Who had just seven hits prior to that and broke his back. Sorry to Major League Scoreboard out in Cincinnati, the Reds lead the National six to three. Jay Bruce is three runs batted in. That was a game that began with Steven Strasburg against uh, Johnny Cueto. Strasburg gave up three early, then Cueto gave up three to tie it up, and now the Reds have taken a 6 3 lead. Swing and a miss. These lucky fans are today's Citizen 7. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area to find a branch near you. Visit citizensbank.com. Mike Moustakas 0 for 3. It's one off the end of the bat. And out of play 0 and 1. Well the Royals. They're in the same division that features the White Sox the Tigers the Twins. And the Indians. And that's a division that I think you could say is up for grabs although the Tigers are probably the best team. They have the. The worst closer situation right, right. now. And they're coming off going to the World Series last year. So you look at the Tigers and think they'd be the favorite in that division. Now the White Sox were the surprise team last year that they were in the hunt until the end. Rollins throws out Moustakis. Well, there are two outs. And Lorenzo Cain is coming up. But you know you figure there's. There's every chance. That the Royals. With the offense that we've seen. Now they are left handed heavy, but the offense that we've seen in this weekend series and their bullpen, they have a chance to win that division. Absolutely. You would think they would think that way too. Now they may not have thought that in years past, but I think they're in the position now where they they could feel like they've turned the corner, gotten over the hill, whatever you want to call. Well, they've started to gel with some of their younger players. That guy's a heck of a DH, and they have a true number one in Shields. Oh, it won the count. To Kane, he tried to check, and I guess he did. They appeal, no swing. Talked about Shields in the first inning after he gave up. That was a strange inning for him anyway. He gave up those runs. He may not give up anything after that. You know, you have to get those kind of guys early because they'll settle down many games, and he did. Strike three. One, two, three go the Royals here at the top of the seventh inning. So as we go to the bottom of the seventh and we do a little stretch it here at Citizens Bank Park, Phillies trail it by four and they'll face the Royals bullpen.
answer. Wheels will give you the question one more time. Name the one other Royal who has won a batting title besides George Brett. Well, my first thing came to mind. I'm going to go with. We talked about him a little bit the other day. I'm going to say Hal McCray. Hal McCray is a very good guess. It is incorrect. Darnell's. That's a good guess. Who was it? Amos right. Otis? No, I know one. It's not a bad guess. No, no, I was only keep going. What else you want? Nah, I'm done. Willie Wilson back in 1982 hit 332. Log back on the Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing. Don stump the fans. Well, changes for the the Royals. Dyson comes into play center field. Gerard Dyson, and the new pitcher, is Tim Collins, who we saw in the opener for the Kansas City Royals. And yeah, they have their bullpen, and they should, even though the game went up last night. They they basically have shut the Phillies down, except for Aaron Rowan's hit the other night. So they're going to get Shields out of there, and they figure they can. Hold a four run lead. Yeah, the Phillies are hoping that they might have the same kind of spark that they had with friends in a three run double. It helped them win game two of the series, but they need to start picking it up with runners in scoring position again because they've had runners in scoring position the last several innings and have not been able to push a run across the plate. So Utley will get it started for the Phillies, or excuse me, Rollins will get it started for the Phillies, then Utley, and then Ryan Howard. Have to give it up to four runs in the first inning. James Shields, he was dancing in and out of trouble, but he certainly settled in. Yeah, one thing he did is you're talking about runners in scoring position, though twice he gave up two out doubles. And now you're having to get a two out hit, which are the hardest hits to get. And he really settled down. In the first inning, you know, the Phillies did a good job. They got some hits off him, uh, some, some seeing eye hits. Um, they were able to get a fly ball when they needed it. Later, they didn't get a fly ball when they needed it. Then he settled down and really started to use his changeup well. Spotted his fastball, used his other pitches. His changeup was outstanding, though. Well, so Collins will start it off for the Royals bullpen, and he begins by throwing a strike to Jimmy Rollins. Rollins is one for three, scored a run back in the first. Now batting right handed with the lefty on the mound. And it's 0 2. I like to get into a game like this, but one of your top starters goes out and doesn't have a good day. It kind of kicks you right in the belly. But they still have nine outs to go. And yep. They're only down by four in their own park. They have to start to piece something together. Not everybody try to hit homers or that sort of stuff. Just try to get it in it. Get a couple here. By the way, just to wrap up the changes for the Royals, Dyson will bat ninth for Kansas City. So he's up second. Uh, in the top of the top of the eighth inning, Phillies began the day three for four with runners in scoring position. They're one for their last six, and it's one and two now to Rollins. Threw him a change up and Jimmy is struck out for the second time today. It's nine strikeouts for the Royals, eight from Shields, and one now for Collins. Well, beginning tomorrow, the Phillies will take on the New York Mets in a three game series. All three games are night games. Tomorrow, all fans 15 and older receive the McDonald's opening week t shirt. Then it's a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night, and Wednesday's a 7 05 start. Get your tickets now by going to Phillies.com or stop by the box office tomorrow. Here's Utley. Chase two for three. Retired on the fly ball to the track in left field his last time up. Well, he's not have a high on base percentage earlier here early in the season either. They're not walking a lot. Now last night they walked three times and then got the big hit and won the game. But you look back and that's one of the things, that's the way you score runs too. You have to walk once in a while, get on base, and then somebody get a double. That's where you give Shields some credit. He didn't walk anybody yep. today. Utley down looking. 
and there are two outs. These guys in this series have come out of their bullpen with a lot of strikeouts. That was close. Could have gone either way. Well, it has gone either way most of the day from Eric Cooper, the home plate umpire. Ryan Howard is 0 for 3. He has struck out twice. Well, Shields just kept throwing him off speed stuff. I think he wasted a fastball with him his last time up. And then it's all mostly change ups. Curve balls. So he had a really good real good approach to Ryan Howard this afternoon. Jeremy Horst is warming in the bullpen for the Phillies. Phillies were in Atlanta this past week. Ryan Howard uh, appeared in the in an episode of The Office comedy, which I believe is in its final year on television. There's a character on the show by the name of Ryan Howard, and Ryan appeared in the show as Ryan Howard. He does a good job when he goes in those things. Does. He said it was a lot of fun. He said that they had six hours set aside for for his part. In that show, as he swings over the top of that last pitch, and Collins just struck out the side. 11 strikeouts today for Royals pitching. End of the seventh, it's the Royals eight, and the Phillies four. Ford stores go further. Buy McDonald's. I'm loving it. And buy Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. Well, Fanatic just uh, brought a youngster up onto the dugout who was attending his first ever Phillies game. It was part of the dance at the end of the seventh inning. Here's Chris Getz to lead it off in the top of the eighth inning. Getz has had a good series. He's five for nine. He has two hits today. Uh, nice play by Ryan Howard on the backhand. He snags it. And there's one out. Jeremy Horst is the new pitcher for the Phillies. Odd in relief of Chad Durbin. Kind of quietly gets did a really good thing back in that third inning when he drag bunted for a hit down four nothing. And that eventually followed by a walk and out a walk and then the bloop double to right field. Infield ground ball next thing you know it was cut in half. So he got it all started out of the eight hole by getting on base. Here's Gerard Dyson. He's 0 for 4 on the year. These guys in this series, as you said, Tom, they could be good, but they've shown they can do some little things and they can also slug. Yeah, I think they're. I, I guess we assume this coming into the seat, coming into the series, but I, I think they. They could be a big surprise, and I don't know if they'll be a surprise. I think that everybody is expecting they're going to be good. And it's just a matter of time 
you know before they they become a good team maybe this is the year I mean they seem like they have all the pieces will be interesting to follow them this year and after seeing them this early and seeing the good things they've been able to do and what kind of year they have on the outside corner three and one the cow to Dyson their general general manager Dayton Moore is over from the Atlanta Braves he's basically built this team and a lot of the pieces on the outside corner again it's three and two and let's face it they had to be really really bad a few years to get some of the players they have because they're high draft picks that's not necessarily the way you want to do it but in this case that's what they were forced into out to right field that's pretty well hit Carrera going back it's over his head off the scoreboard he plays it well but Dyson slides in comfortably at second base. One out double and now back to the top of the order for Alex Gordon. Lays off. It's a good breaking pitch. Owen won the count. Gordon has scored three runs in that leadoff spot. Out of play, and it's uh, remains 0 and 2. Royals ought not only have Dayton Moore, who's over. Did he just make that catch? It was a deflection. He made a heck of a well, play. A good on deflection. It. Yeah. Royals not only have Dayton Moore as their general manager, they also have a little local flavor uh, in their front office. Their assistant general manager in charge of scouting and player development is uh, J.J. Piccolo, who is uh, a Cherry Hill West graduate. There's a bloop to left field. John Mayberry won't be able to make the play. His throw to the plate nowhere near in time. Dyson scores easily. And it's a 9 4 ball game. But Dyson just made either one of the greatest reads of the ball they've ever <laughs> seen or would have been out by two bases. Because he breaks on that right away. And it looked like Mayberry had a, had a chance to catch it as high as it was hit in the air. But from where he was, it was going to be it. You see them laughing in the dugout. So he takes one look at it and he decides. What if he thought there were two outs? He didn't start running as if he thought there were two no, outs. I think he thought it was going to drop. Yeah. And he did the right thing as it turned out. But they're going to they're teasing him a little bit about it. Nine four Kansas City. And here's Escobar. All right. So Alex Gordon's over at first. He's now three for four today, seven for 14 in the series with five runs scored. He's been impressive. They had four RBIs. Played left field well, too. One ball, one strike to count to Escobar. Boy, this game is just like Friday. They just keep adding on. The Phillies don't score. Nine runs on 12 hits now for the Royals. Four and ten for the Phils. Back toward the middle, and Horst goes to second for one and a one-six-three double play. Good feed to Jimmy Rollins, and Rollins took care of the rest. But the Royals do score another run on an RBI by Alex Gordon. We go on to the bottom of the eighth inning with the Royals on top by five.
against the Cardinals. All fans will receive the Expedex 2013 schedule magnet. Well, hold on a second. That's not the only giveaway. On Sunday, the 21st, Citizens Bank sponsors the Fanatics' birthday. Make your plans, order your tickets at phillies.com. All fans uh, 14 and under will receive the time traveling DVD. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Michael Young is three for three, two singles and a double. And he'll face left hander Tim Collins on in relief uh, of James Shields. Collins struck out the side. Teaching your son Tommy how to Shazam. Is that the app where you just hold yeah. it out? And they I wanted to hear who that the song rendition was? of Jailhouse Rock was by. It was by the Blues Brothers. Yeah, I knew Didn't that. Didn't know that. It was Elvis to me. You know. Anyway, it's always nice when you see somebody your son's age and they know all this stuff that you actually could show them something. He did not have Shazam he's on his getting, phone. He's going to have it now. Huh. Surprising. Yeah, well, that's what I'm. That's my point. Wheels, you're hipper than a 15. Oh yeah, right. Really <laughs> hip. Every once in a while. Two and one, the count to Michael Young. Opposite way of foul ball, two and two. It'll be Young, then Kevin Franzen has come out of the on-deck circle. He had it. He had it right in his hands. We're coming to the games for so many years, and I had my shot. Darn. Some might say it's nice that you're going to protect the person behind you. True. You might want to just let it go. It's tough to do that, though. Yeah. Here's the 3 2 pitch coming to Young. Over to the right side. Gets goes to his left a step or two. And Collins is retired four in a row. It's just like he did the other night. Well, here comes Kevin Franzen, who's been the brightest spot of this entire series for the Phillies. He hasn't started a game yet. He's two for two as a pitch hitter. And this is what he did last night. Gave the Phils their victory. Yeah, it was really impressive. Came up there and got that fastball from Holland, who was throwing really hard. Had just struck out two batters, ripped it into the alley. Michael Young scored the winning run, and that was nice for Kevin Franson. Gave the Phillies a, a win that it didn't look like they were going to get. Well, he takes it inside. It's one ball and no strikes. It's and interesting it, listening to him talk to Murph about, you know, trying to. Assume that role as a pinch hitter. Oh, it's such a hard role. Bet you as hard as some of these relievers throw nowadays. Well, it's that one on the nose. Escobar backhands. You almost have to go up and look for a fastball early against today's relief, late inning relievers. Well, I thought what he said yesterday was, was I mean, it was very, um, it was very smart. You see a mock throwing the pen. Yeah, he watched the fastballs. That were being thrown, he, he said they were toward the outer edge against Mayberry, who was a right handed hitter. And, and I guess they were, there was one that was toward the outer edge to Brown from the left side. So he thought, all right, well, he's going to throw me a fastball. It's going to be toward the outer part of the plate. Which is what many pitchers will do in those spots in the game because they'll try and throw away to keep the guy in the ballpark. In that case, he kept him in the ballpark and still lost. Want to know the count to Kratz? Kratz is 0 for 2 with a sack fly. Play and it's two and one. You would think he's going to get one of those certificates that says it's his first Phillies game. That one's just to our right. He has a heck of a chance of that being his first Phillies game. 
And that gentleman was walking along in front of the press box. The ball was coming his way and he made the grab and now he's just going to keep on going. <laughs> That's quite an exit stage right huh. <laughs> yeah, well we'll take a ball. Away now it, it was a, it was a great catch and a great play. Obviously it's still not as good as the guy walking with the food tray in his hand last year that made the catch a, a few feet away from where he was. Oh man that was a breaking ball that was up and it was called a strike by Eric Cooper and Eric Kratz who not very often reacts adversely. He thought this was a ball oh. and in all honesty it was. Doing the bongo cam as the Phillies are down 9 4 here in the top of the ninth inning. Time now for our WB Mason delivery of the game, and this was, uh, well, a big time delivery. Now it's a four run hit right here. Grand slam home run. Had to go to review. And they knew it was a home run. Well, they thought it was, and the umpires went in. Didn't take very long after they looked at that and said, okay. Billy Butler had stopped at second base, and he got to have a two base trot after that. Now Philippe Almont will take over here in the top of the ninth inning for the Phillies. After Jeremy Horst allowed a run in the eighth inning. Almont pitched in Monday's ball game against the Braves, so he has been quiet since. It's been all, almost a week. One inning, one strikeout, one walk. And he'll face Billy Butler, who has seven runs batted in today. Well, no matter what he does, he can't tie the all-time record against the Phillies of nine. When you said that, a Rubio Durazo, I we saw didn't that, game. that. Yeah, we saw that game in Arizona. I was thinking it was still eight by Chris Byer did it one night against the Phillies in Montreal at the Big O, but then Durazo got one more. I believe it was a night that Larry Boa had a spectacular ejection in that game, and I'm going to remember the umpire in a minute. He had just had enough. At that point, and well, you could ask him in the post-game show. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, he'll remember. It's it was going to be great. To, great to talk to Bo. He's going to be on the post-game show. Mike Missinelli and uh, Marty Bystrom's here in the yard. It was one of the one of the best, and he had a lot of good ones. But that was one of the best I ever saw. He's thinking about it right now. He's listening to you. He's saying, "Wheels, oh, it's this, it's I, that, and the other." I thing. can picture the guy, Tony Rendazzo. That's what I'm going to say. It was okay. One and one. The count to Butler, and it's two and one. Wheels' his phone is going to buzz any moment now. <laughs> it was eventually on balls and strikes that he got thrown out. The guy was behind the plate. But he had watched Durazzo just go off all night, and he that was enough. Inside, three and one. I don't think he tried to do that, but who knows? Move his feet a little.
And it, he ball, missed his spot pretty well. That ran pretty good in there. Well, it makes you a little less comfortable. Outside, ball four. And Butler draws a leadoff walk here in the ninth I inning. I think they would run for him now and go for defense. Well, the yeah, ninth. they're following him up the first base yeah. line. Elliot Johnson's going to pinch run for him. It's like watching a Dream Week game, a fantasy camp game. That's what you see. <laughs> As Wills mentioned, uh, and we mentioned a moment ago, Larry Bowe will make his debut on the postgame show. Five time All Star, the 2001 Manager <laughs> of the Year. He'll join Mike Missinelli, of course, Marty, who's here at the ballpark with an in depth look at the first week of the season. Plus a recap of today's action. That's next on the Phillies postgame show live from Sugar House Casino. Uh, confirm or deny that that was the night DeRazzo got the nine RBIs when he got thrown out. There's Perez. Elliott Johnson pinch running. First pitch is a strike. It's 0 and 1. Down the right field line and out of play. So it's 0 2. Now the Phillies will say goodbye to the American League after today and get back into the National League tomorrow. And someone else will have a, a series that will feature the National League against the American League. Next time the Royals have a game against the National League will be on the 27th of May when they begin a four game slate against the Cardinals two at home and two against the Cardinals. excuse me they're going to play the Astros actually wills the 20th 21st and 22nd and then they'll play the Cardinals a week later Cardinals are a true nat natural rival for these guys it's about. I think it took me about two and a half hours, 245 maybe, to go from St. Louis to Kansas City to and see. What would game. it take a normal drive? Swing it a miss, one away here in the ninth. Well, it depends. It's wide open terrain, Bills. There's no traffic lights or it's, anything it's like Missouri that. It's Missouri and it's flat. Yeah. Every time the Phillies retire the opposing team, one, two, three, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Giving you all your favorite sports all year long. Jeff Francoeur is one for four. Way outside, one to know. Yeah, he's throwing across his body right now. You can see the motion he just made with his hand. Trying to keep his shoulder closed. But these hitters are not real comfortable against this guy, especially after that ball came inside to Butler. Trancourt pulls off anyway, and he's really going to pull off on this one on Ma. The foul, and it's one and one. Well, one thing about Jeff Frank Court, and that's what he's done so far here today. And we've seen him play a lot of games over the years, and he does give you a great effort. He may not look real good sometimes when he's hitting, but he will go up there hacking. He tries to do damage. Breaking ball, little low, two and two. All right, Wills, let's get back to the interleague stuff for the Royals. I got to correct everything I just said. Uh oh. Because remember, the Astros are now in the American yeah, League, uh, so that's not a National League no. series. <laughs> that's hard to get used to. But they do have a series next week against the Braves on the 16th and 17th. I said, you know, the other day when you were talk, talking about the Braves would lead the league in strikeouts, I said, no, the Astros will. Right. Well, they can't. Well, I, mean, the I thought you meant the majors. Well, I. I'm glad that's what you thought because I was hoping that's nice play by Michael Young. They get one at second. 
All right, we've got an update on the Major League Notebook. Murph, uh, I'm sorry if I screwed you up as far as the interleague play goes, <laughs> but uh, did you screw up something with the Major League Notebook? Well, no, we're, we're yeah, adding something to the Major League Notebook. Excellent. You know, it's always it's a flowing situation, is the Notebook, and uh, a little <laughs> bit of history made uh, today between the Boston Red Sox and Toronto Blue Jays. Will Middlebrooks for the Red Sox hit three home runs, and actually huh. in his fourth at bat, flew out to the warning track mm -hmm. as the Red Sox just pounded Toronto 13 to nothing. R.A. Dickey struggling a bit. Four and a third allowed uh, ten hits and seven earned runs in that game. John Lester continues to be strong. We saw him uh, in the spring. Five hits, no runs allowed for him. Uh, the Red Sox scored in six of the nine innings today, and they won that game 13. Ball is jumping out of the dome yeah. so far this year. It really is. Well, it does. Thank you, Murph. We appreciate that. I think someone, uh, someone picked Dickey this year as one of their impact players. Was that you, Wheels? How's that going? <laughs> Early, not good. In fact, <laughs> Murph, Murph made a point of saying to me, I don't think that was a real good pick. I think he's going to get hit. <laughs> and I, I looked at Murph and I said, yeah, well, you may have a point, but I'm going to stay with it. Well, here's Eric Cosper with runners on first and second. Good call, Murph. It's, side it's, early. Of. it's early, but uh, that's some pounding. By the way, I want to thank Jason Stark for uh, helping me along with the interleague stuff. Mm -hmm. Jason had sent me a note. It's very nice of him. It won't be the first time we have the Astros still in the National League. Nor the last. Runners on first and second. Breaking ball outside. 2-0 to Hosmer. Hosmer 5 for 15 so far. There's J.C. Gutierrez warming in the bullpen for the Royals. Wheels here are your picks for the season. Yeah, the two are going to be, you know, the two are hanging in there. You want to uh, use your X at all? <laughs> 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 Murph liked that one. He's listening to it. Should have seen the X, Murph. I got him right, <laughs> right in the middle there. <laughs> two and one the cow to Hosmer. That's, That's a, a ball guy in Philippe Almont. And Eric Cooper, the home plate umpire. It's good he saw that. That'll put runners on second and third. There is a flinch here. It's a good call. Right here, watch. See, that's a flinch and that's a balk. It's a good call. That's not even that's not even close. Good call. Inside, it's three and one. Eric Cooper's had a little trouble with the strike zone today, but he had his eyes right on Philippe Almont with that one. So three and one the count to Hosmer right. here at the top of the night. He knew that it was either a, a balk or a bee sting. He did look startled. Mm -hmm. And there's ball four, so the bases are loaded. Now Kratz right now is beside himself because he's he's like, didn't you just call that on me? Uh, it wasn't a strike, but it wasn't a strike to Kratz either. Now the umpire didn't lose this game today, or I mean, we'll go with that, go there. But you know. But he did struggle. Well, hasn't been real good. But Kratz, after that pitch, you can see he just had to get out of there before he said something. And that's the best thing to do. Just, just walk away. Well, now Chris gets the batter. Gets his two for four today with two runs scored. The bases are loaded. Royals up nine four. And a strike, and it's zero and one. Well, Ma is still a work in progress. That he can come in and, and get really wild, especially when you haven't used him. Trying to check, he did hold up, and it's one and one. No appeal, no swings. Is Jeff Kellogg? And it's two and one. It's a 
pitch. That was good movement too by Amon. 94 miles an hour. This ball will run on left-handed hitters. And of course then it runs in on right-handed batters. Now the 2 2 pitch. And he gets a piece of it, fouls it back to the screen. The Royals have uh, their home opener tomorrow in Kansas City against the Twins. They'll be the next ones to see R.A. Dickey because the Blue Jays are in after Minnesota. When he starts his comeback, breaking ball low, 3 and 2. So the bases are loaded. The count three balls and two strikes. The runners will be off on this pitch. And the runners will go back and we'll do it again. Phillies half of the ninth inning. It's eight nine and one. Carrera, Mayberry, and then the leadoff batter. Down by five right now, nine to four. Swing and a miss. He got him with a fastball that just kept on Barrett inside. Almont loads the bases, gets the final out. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Royals lead it by five, and they'll go back to the bullpen. One nine is John Mayberry in this order. A reminder that the Powerball, which is at sixty million dollars, goes off on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and the Mega Millions at fifty-six million dollars is Tuesdays and Fridays. Good luck if you decide to play. Eric Cosmer into the ball game as a pinch hitter now stays in the game as a first baseman. J.C. Gutierrez. Will take over on the mound. Two games for Gutierrez, including one against the Phillies. Two innings, one strikeout. And he'll face Carrera to start things off. And then Mayberry. Phillies led this ball game 4 0. And they now trail at 9 to 4. Cole Hamill started for the Phillies. And he went five and two thirds, a lot of career high eight earned runs. James Shields started for the the Rays. Give him credit. He got four runs to start the game, and then worked in and out of trouble the rest of his outing. He went six innings, allowed ten hits, four runs, eight strikeouts. So now Gutierrez will face Carrera. Carrera is 0 for 3 at his first start in the Phil's uniform. A couple of different times he tried to bunt his way on, which wasn't a bad idea. Ran some deep counts, but was retired both times on ground balls to second. A 
outside. One and zero the count to Carrera. Last night the task was not as daunting. The Phillies were down by two going into their final at bat. Now they're down by five. And yeah, they scored one inning in this game. At the knees with a 96 mile an hour fastball, two and two. That's what had happened last night, too, till the ninth inning. So not real consistent offensively at this point in the season. The starting pitching is not held up the way you expect it to. So as a result, they're not off to a real good start. Six games. And tomorrow, Doc will pitch, and he'll be opposed by Matt Harvey. As Doc said after his last start, he's focused on just getting better and being the pitcher he was in the past. He feels like he can. Outside ball four. So a base runner for the Phillies to begin the bottom of the ninth. The way it began last night, as Tom said, the difference is two, two runs as opposed to five runs. Now, the week ahead for the Phillies includes those three games against the New York Mets. Comcast Sportsnet, PHL 17, and the Comcast Network. Off day on Thursday, and then a weekend series in Miami. Two night games, and then it wraps up with a day game on Sunday. And then a quick jaunt out to Cincinnati where the Phillies will take on the Reds. Some runs scored out there. Hopefully the Phillies will get in on the party. John Mayberry takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. That place it, 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 the ball is just jumping out of there early in the year. I don't know whether it's warm there or what's going on. They may need the humidor the way it's going. <laughs> Well, they won today 6 3 over the Nationals. Breaking ball, and it's 0 and 2. They beat Washington 2 out of 3. Strasburg today, 5 and a third, 9 hits and 6 earned runs. He walked 4. Yeah, that place can get you a little bit. It's hard to pitch it. Mayberry went on that one, so he's a strikeout victim. Five strikeouts for the Royals bullpen today. And overall, 12 strikeouts, or excuse me, 13. And here comes Ben Revere. He's got a couple hits today. Beer singled in the first, struck out in the second, singled in the fourth. They grounded out his last time up. <laughs> Opposite way, base hit for Revere. So he has a three hit day. That'll put two on with one out. Now Rollins will be up. He's one for four. He has struck out the last two times. It's not being long before they get that Herrera up or Holland, either one. Oh, well, they're going to go right back to the well. It's Holland who blew the game last night. Who's up and firing with one out here in the ninth. Yeah, well, if they pitch if this guy pitches it into a save situation, they're going to bring Holland and get him right back in the pool. The Phillies would have to score a run and have the bases loaded. Time running there. That home plate or in the on deck circle for a save situation. Outside, it's 1 0. Right, they have to get the bases loaded and obviously the tying run in the on deck right. circle. It's 1 0 to Rollins. 
Seven for 25 on the year. His average at 280 in the first week. In the air to right field. Going back on it, Frank Corr to the warning track, to the wall. Gone! A three run home run for Jimmy Rollins. And the Phillies all of a sudden are within two here in the bottom of the ninth inning. First home run of the year for Rollins. First RBIs of the season for Jimmy. But I have your save situation. Time runs in the off deck circle. And Mike O'Farrell from Philadelphia, you've just won $200 compliments of the McDonald's home run jackpot. Boy, that's Jimmy Rollins' zone. Here comes Ned Yost to make the switch. How many times have we seen him hit a pitch down, in, and drive it? And there it was again. He can hit, he can hit about 30 more if he can have that pitch all year. So a three-run home run makes this a 9-7 ball game. Chase Utley is due up. Ned Yost. Out to the mound. He's going to stall for a moment. Yeah, that guy just got up. The bullpen door is open, but he hasn't made the call. There it goes. He just signaled to the pen. Jimmy Rollins now six home runs away from 200 for his career. A pitching change here in Philadelphia. The Phillies down by two, and the Royals' closers coming in for the second straight day. And the guy they got to last night, right-hander Greg Holland, in again to try to pick up a save. Yeah, he got himself in trouble last night. Chase Sutley takes a real close 3-2 pitch for a walk. Another good at bat by Ryan Howard. He walks. Michael Young walks and strike out there to Dominic Brown. John Mayberry called out on a slider finally away. And then here comes Kevin France. Franz had shot one into the alley in right center field. They cleared the bases and send everybody home happy. He's already batted today, so it's going to have to be someone else that's the hero today. Well, just pretend you're starting all over again. Here we go. Oh, yep. There's two outs this time. I mean, there's one out. Utley today is two for four. Same guys are coming up. And he takes a pitch outside. That's, almost, one though. that's almost surreal, isn't it? And don't think that Holland doesn't know that. What happened with him so far in two games? Three of those walks last night. Outside, two and oh. Dave Island. They're going to get somebody else up in the bullpen. They're going to get that Herrera. Yeah, they might. And that guy was really nasty. I thought they might even use him. You know, you, you have a closer. You're trying to stay with him. You want to get him back. 
Well, you know, they may have a short leash. There, there he, he is. is. Yeah. Not that Holland's uh, any day at the beach, but they'd rather have him in the game than that Herrera in Phillies would. You talked to their hitters today about that guy last night. Outside, three and one. He's not getting ready fa real fast out there either. You Maybe he doesn't need a whole lot, but just watching him warm up with Ryan Howard's on day, he's just taking his time. Just like he did last night, Utley runs the count to three and two. Deja vu all over again, right? Well, he knows they need a base runner to bring the tying run to the plate here in the bottom of the ninth inning. He may not be as comfortable in what a strike and a ball is today. Utley hits it in the air to center field. Playable for Dyson. There are two outs. Well, he challenged him. That's not the tying run at home plate, Chase Utley. So he challenged him with a fastball and won that battle. Ryan Howard has not had a good day. He's 0 for 4. He has struck out three times. He just has not been able to carry the success from spring training over to the regular season at least during the first week of the year. Howard with seven home runs and 16 RBIs and a 322 average in spring training. Want to know the count to him. Line drive base hit to left center field. Well, Dyson can fly. He cut it off. Howard stops it first. Let's see if they pitch run for him. They did last night. Boy, that guy's in the game today. He's not the tying run. And that's the only reason why you wouldn't run for him. But the other thing is, you know, you get a kind of dribbler in the infield. Something you may not have a play, but you have a play at second. That's a good point. Phillies have uh, already used Franzen. They've already used Mayberry, who's in the game. Nix is in the on deck circle. They could use his pitcher if they want to, like a Cliff Lee to pinch run if they choose to. Freddie Galvis is their last infielder. Michael Young has three hits today. And he loops that one to right field. Frank Cork coming on. He's not going to get there. And the Phillies have back to back hits now against Holland. The tying run is over at first base, and Lance Nix is the winning run. Yeah, and don't be surprised if they go to that Herrera right now. Well, they're going to buy some time. Escobar is in the talk to Holland. He was taking a long time to get ready, but he's ready now. Here comes Ned Yost. Yeah. Nix has been introduced. A lot of things are going right for the Royals right now, but they have a little closer problem. And they may do a quick flip flop the way the Cubs have done already. Well, they signal for the pen for Herrera. So Holland is being lifted from the game after back to back hits by the Phillies. The tying run is aboard. We get back.
Marlon Herrera, who will come into the ball game and try to close it out for the Royals. Not only can he throw hard, he also has a good changeup. See his numbers in three games. He's got six strikeouts in three innings of work. And there are two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. Howard's at second, Young is at first, and Lance Nix is the pinch hitter for the Phillies. He's already been introduced. How nice is this? For Ned Yost to have his closer struggle like this and still have this guy to go to. Most of the times with a manager, when a closer starts to go south like this in an inning, they, they live or die with him. And in this case, he doesn't have to. Now Ryan Howard still on the base pass. He is not the tying run. Michael Young, who ran the bases well last night with Franzen's ball to right center field, is over at first base. And now Nix and the first pitch to him. It's over first strike. You throw him a changeup. Nix is a dead fastball hitter, but Herrera has a good changeup. Right, and you know that's what they talked about with him when he came into the game. Is I don't know if we're going to challenge him with a fastball he can hit, and the shadows are getting a little nasty right now. They're in a no doubles defense way back. Out in front of another changeup. It's 0-2. Yeah, you wouldn't expect him to challenge him. There's Holland lifted from the game. He's got to have a lot of things rolling around his head right now. Oh, it to the count. And Nix fouls it away. Three straight changeups. He did get Nix last night. And he got him on the changeup. Oh, yeah. That's a good one too. His arm slot's unbelievable. That, that fastball and changeup come out of the same spot, and the arm speed is really good. Back toward the middle, a base hit into center field. Howard's being waved home, and no throw from Dyson, and the Phillies are within one. The tying runs at second. The winning run is aboard. Nice job by Lance Nix. He got a fastball. Good job by Ryan Sandberg too. He knows they're not going to throw home there, because you would never throw home and allow the other two guys to move up. So he's going to wave Ryan Howard. They knew they were safe with him on the bases, unless maybe a force play in the infield. There's that low fastball, and Tom said that's what Lance Nix is going to look for. Really didn't think they throw him. There. And there's Ryan coming home to score the run that gets him to within the one and a good job by the Royals they're not even think about throwing that ball home. Well now it's a 9 8 ball game Eric Kratz is the batter he's the ninth man to come to the plate in this inning. Phillies have scored four runs. And Kratz hits the first pitch foul down the left field line. Well, that would have been interesting. Wow another change up. Well this didn't. This didn't look like it was in the books. I mean, what a finish they're having right here. The Phillies were down 9 4 when this inning began. Ned Yost, I don't think, likes this ballpark. I mean, think about his last games as the manager of the <laughs> Milwaukee Brewers in this ballpark and how bad they were. It cost him his job. Yeah. Owen won the count to Kratz. Runners lead off first and second. And Eric takes a fastball for a strike. It's 0 and 2. He's sitting up there thinking about changeups. Oh, and to the count. In the dirt. Oh. Gets away for Perez. Both runners move up. The tying runs at third. The winning runs at second. Okay, change up in the dirt and he couldn't come, he couldn't control it. They scored a wild pitch. It's a change up and he just totally overthrew it. It would be a bad thing if he overthrew it again. That'd be sweet, Tom. Whatever it takes. A little quail would be nice too. The yeah, outfielders come in a few steps, although Dyson's still deep in center. One and two, the count to Kratz. Tying runs at third, the winning runs at second, and the pitch. Ground ball up the third baseline, and it trickles foul. That would have done it. Shades of Carlos Ruiz <laughs> in the World Series, and 
Eric Bruntlett over at third base. James Shields sitting in the clubhouse maybe watching this. This is his win. I remember that night. Again, it's one and two to Eric Kratz. Young at third. He's the tying run. Nicks at second, the winning run. The pitch from Herrera. Another ground of foul. It has to be tough to see right now. Eric Kratz up there, just like Lance Nix, battling a really tough pitcher. See those shadows. Last night it was Kevin Franzen. Franzen and Kratz, the closest of friends, the roommates in the minor leagues. One buddy went came through last night. Can another one come through today? Towering pop up off the third base line. Mustakis runs out of room. Now here we go again. Brian Sandberg down there talking to Michael Young about getting a good lead. Getting that walking lead. It only had one bounce away. And that would be huge if one could bounce away and they could tie it that way. 39,451. What's left on their feet? It's one and two to Kratz. The pitch. A little tapper foul again. Oh, he's thrown one ball and ten strikes so far. Herrera has. It's a great battle right now. Throwing some nasty pitches. He's fouling off. This is a seven pitch at bat. This will be the eight pitch to Kratz. Playing him in right center, he pulls the ball. So it's a win. So it's over. Yeah, over without a play at the plate. See how the overshift. Herrera has his signs. One and two, the count, the pitch. Oh. Fouls it back. He got a fastball and he fouled it to the screen. It remains one and two. Oh, he was on that one. Big time arm in right field, of course, in Frank Porter. There's the fastball. They foul it straight back like that. They'll probably get a change up there. Good time arm in right field. Above average arm in left field, too. It's an eight pitch at bat. Here's number nine. Swing and a miss. He got him. And Herrera throws the change up and seals the deal for the Royals. And the Phillies lose today by a final of nine to eight. Billy Butler, a seven RBI day for the Kansas City Royals. It turns out he is our Chevrolet player of the game. It did get dicey in the end, and the Phillies scored four runs in their half of the ninth inning. They had the tying run at third and the winning run at second. But Herrera won the battle against Eric Kratz. He well, finally got him to miss a changeup. Yeah, and, and that was almost a no-brainer there that he's going to get changeup after that fastball. He just fouled back, but that thing disappeared on him. 9-8 the final score. The Royals win the series. They take two of three for the Phillies. We'll be back to talk more about it right after this.